a global namaste to all beautiful souls from across the world and greetings to each and every one of you. My name is Simran Ahuja and I'm truly delighted to welcome you lovely people to the most amazing feeling of peace, harmony and happiness. I welcome you to the beautiful world of healing our earth. Do our minds affect the planet? How can we bring about change in the world? Today, the eminent speakers from across the globe, from Australia to Americas, shall take us on this journey to discover well, how everything can happen by changing ourselves from within. We are here to see the light within us so that we can bring brightness all around the globe. So here we are, healthy mind, healthy planet, a global online summit. This summit is filled with knowledge inspiration music and meditation and is brought to you by healing our earth and enrich tv in cooperation with brahma kumaris so we are truly excited to begin this free online summit thank you for being a part of healing our earth to get started we start from Australia and we have with us the very beautiful Dr. Janara Goreng Goreng. Well, she's going to take us around Australia and I want to say hi to the lovely baby as well. She's so adorable. We're going to start with Janara and who better than Dr. Janara will take us around Australia. But before I introduce and welcome her here, I want to speak a few words about Dr. Janara. Dr. Janara is a Waka Waka Wooly Wooly First Nations woman from central Queensland and carries the tradition of her clan through medicine practice. Being a strong woman and teaching Aboriginal law and spirituality as well as internationally. She's a published poet, a writer, a performer of traditional song and dance, and contemporary free artist who regularly facilitates Aboriginal women's business workshops and Aboriginal law, culture, and spiritual retreats. Dr. Janara is the CEO of One Global, Global, a transformational leadership company that utilizes her PhD research in sacred leadership, and she's the chair of the Foundation of Indigenous Recovery and Development. Dr. Janara has had a 40 year career as a senior manager in the public sector at the universities in Australia and has taught at the Australian University. Currently, a lecturer at the Australian Catholic University and a research scholar at the Australian National University. We are truly delighted to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Janara, who will take us around Australia. How are you doing? Namaste and greetings to you, Dr. Janara. Namaste, uapalya, as we say in our country. Welcome everyone, thank you so much for having us. I want to welcome you all. We have a tradition in Australia where we welcome people to country, to our land. So I want to welcome you all to Nanjanatiya, the name we give our earth, the planet. Nanjanatiya is our mother. So welcome to this country, to this planet, to this earth, to this Healing Our Earth program. As we thank the earth for giving us everything we need, we sing to the earth and we sing the earth to grow and to provide for us all. Our mother, the earth, gives birth to us, as we believe. And on behalf of all of the First Nations and Indigenous people around the world, today, I welcome you all to Healing the Earth. 
it's very important that we heal our worth. So now I'm going to sing you a sacred song from our culture where we ask the earth to reign and to grow and to give us all the bounty and vitality that we need to survive and to live. Please just close your eyes in respect and recognition of this sacred song. We don't know when it was made thousands of years ago, been passed on down in our clans. Thank you so much. Uwapalya from me in Australia. Me. Kapina Kinchua Nukunte Yuna Ula Nilima Kuna Talana Kapu Nulae. We blow the healing power of our medicine on everyone. Uwapalya, welcome to country. Welcome to Nanjanit here. Welcome to Healing Our Earth. From myself and my granddaughter, Willa, who's making lots of noise here. Thank you, everyone. Uwapalya. Uwapalya. Thank you so much. It was so lovely and bright to see you. Thank you, and we just loved it. We also like to convey lots of love to your granddaughter. Today, we are here to celebrate the World Environment Day, which happens on the 5th of June. And we take this opportunity of bringing forward healthy mind, healthy planet. And moving ahead, I'm truly delighted to welcome Caroline Ward from Australia. Caroline Ward has studied and practiced with the Brahma Kumaris for three decades and has been guided through the many nuances of her journey, primarily by inspiration, intuition, and vision. The strongest influence in her life, the way and her work has certainly been the sacred feminine, which has also invited her to travel to more than 60 countries to teach and learn. She's also written two books and awakening to the ways of the deep feminine has been explained so beautifully in the book. The four faces of woman and my courage, your courage, Galen's interests are varied, but her way is one. Embracing the art and discipline of the great mother in how to lead, love, and live. In terms of expertise, she's masterful in the art of guiding transition. And today, the world needs love peace and harmony. So we are truly delighted and how wonderful it is to welcome Caroline Ward. Caroline, Om Shanti to you. Om Shanti E. Thank you, Simran, and Namaste to everyone all over the globe. What a wonderful, wonderful gathering we have. I'd like to say what a privilege it is to be invited by the Healing Our Earth team on this global online summit, Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. I think it's just an extraordinary initiative. And I, I have to say from behind the scenes, while it looks impeccable and streamlined and seamless, these guys and girls have been working with such an exquisite, amount of love to make this happen. And it's just a privilege really to be a part of it. I was thinking about how to, how to begin this and it's such a, a huge, it's such a complicated, vast topic really. And it's too much if we, well for me, it's too much if I think about the complications. 
So I decided I just want to share a story and, and then maybe we can do a little bit of a meditation. And the story I was thinking about was um, my first retreat. I had been meditating or trying to meditate um, for about maybe four or five months. It was during a period when my husband had contracted cancer and we learned that meditation was really profoundly helpful in either the healing or the, at least the facing of a terminal illness. Anyway, he did pass away, but it, it was with such beauty and dignity. And some months after that, I, I went to a retreat. Now, for me, it was totally new. I had never been to a meditation retreat before. I'd been to retreats at school, but ne never anything that had, like, uh, I think it was held as in the space was looked after by about 20 experienced yogis. People who lived in their normal daily lives, but they dedicated their life to a, the way of meditation. The, and I didn't know what it was in those days, but that journey inside where you find meaning, you find deep peace, you find joy, you find self-confidence and you find connectedness. Connectedness with yourself but interestingly when you connect deeply inside yourself then you connect with everyone and everything. So I went on this retreat and over the weekend Apart from the meditation, they also cook in, in meditation. So the food is full of this divine, exquisite energy and also tasting very nice. But the thing is, the energy was incredible. So over this time, meditating, learning, eating this divine kind of sacred food and everything done in a sacred way. I just felt myself getting higher and higher and higher and I wasn't sad or anything at the beginning. I was in a very good space and yes, I got happier, but it's like my eyes got opened. I started to see things. It was, it was held in the country, you know, in among really beautiful trees and plants and with a river running through and, um, I started to become aware of the life of, of the trees around me. It was, it was quite extraordinary, as if I'd never seen a tree before. So rather than just thinking, oh, that's a tree, I started to see this sort of living force in front of me and, and experience it. Anyway, the retreat was over. And as I was driving back towards my home in Sydney, and I lived down by the Sydney Harbour, which is anyway very beautiful. But I was 30 by this time. And I can honestly say that I had never, ever seen such a sunset in my life. Now, I don't pretend to believe that the sunset turned on just because you know, I was in a heightened awareness. What I came to understand over time was that as I got in tune with really who I am inside, as I, as I experienced my own beauty, I was able to see and resonate with and deeply appreciate the beauty that was all around me. And, and so for me, it was from that point on, I can say it was like before and after, you know, a marker in my life when I began to feel a part of this earth, that I started to recognize the gift of beauty, the abundance that this mother earth shares with us, that nourishes us in so many ways. And I can say that after all of these years of practicing meditation, of, of tuning into this feeling 
of my own inner beauty and that within everyone else, that I'm much, much more careful of my of over consuming of um, I certainly couldn't there's no way I could throw a piece of rubbish on the ground it just it just doesn't make any sense you know if your world is one of beauty then you can't create ugliness and what I notice is that this earth in which we live in the more people that start to connect and meditate, and there's many, many of us these days, right? Many, many, many. The more awareness we have and the more care that we have. And I think it's, in the end, it's quite simple to, to find that connection, experience that beauty, and then we see it outside of us and we take care of it. So I'd like to just take... Um, a few moments, I think, to take us on a, on a journey inside. Many of you already meditate in your own way. And if you choose in this moment to just go in your particular way of meditating, please do so. Feel very free. What we'll be doing is connecting all over the globe. And it's interesting, isn't it, that as we've not been able to connect physically in our lockdowns because of the coronavirus, there's somehow something that happens. We, we have to resort to this other way of connecting, which is energetic, which is through our subtle feelings, through our hearts and our minds. And as is the name of this online conference, Summit, you know, healthy minds, healthy planet. Healthy minds, healthy hearts, healthy planet. And so if we have this sense of being more than just our, our physical bodies, that these bodies in a way are a gift from planet Earth, the material world that is here for our for our pleasure, for our, you know, joy of creating, of relating, of, of being together. Our bodies are a gift, but we exist before, during and after. These bodies have their lifeline, their timeline. And so when we connect with that eternal being that we are, this being of light, this spark of pure energy. And as we do that, it's very easy then to connect with others beyond the gender, the race, the size, the shape, the age. They all fall away. And then we're brothers, sisters, part of one family in one home. So I'd like to just take the last um, eight minutes or so to hold that space, meditative space. And I invite you to just imagine if you can, as you continue to breathe very normally and just allowing yourself to relax. To imagine if you can that, let's begin with our feet, that your feet don't belong to this body. Let your calves and your knees, neither do they belong to this body. Your legs and your torso, your arms, neither. And that your head also can move away to just join the rest of the body. And that you're still very, very present. Your awareness, your consciousness. Free. 
unlimited. Free from the constraints of any rules or anything that anyone says you should be or you can be or you can't be. There's this sense of spaciousness. And I wonder if you could imagine that this very subtle feeling beyond form, beyond the physical, I wonder if you could imagine the many thousands and thousands of us that are connected in this incredible global online summit beyond even online that we are connected at the level of energy like a a massive, beautiful, luminous circle of big-hearted, kind-minded beings of light encircling this planet. And this sense of luminosity, the luminous orb that is our planet, that is our home. And that this healing light that comes from all of us who choose to care. This healing light is healing the hearts and minds of those who are suffering. It's bringing peace to the angry kindness to the violent, clarity to the confused, love to the abandoned and alone. Meaning to the hopeless. And that everyone here is holding humanity in their highest, most awake, most tuned in, most conscious and beautiful state of being, elevating humanity. Elevating to a state where we all can care. When we feel our own beauty, our own connected hearts, then yes, it's possible to care and take action from that space, a healing space. And so as we continue this extraordinary rolling around this planet 
today in this global online summit. I think it can be easy to keep this image of all of us here in our homes, in our physical world, but there's another level, like angels, if you like. At this level, we're connecting and we're holding over the next eight hours a possibility for the consciousness of humanity to rise enough that we see clearly that there is meaning and we can care. I wish only the most wonderful success for today's summit and for the ongoing endeavours and commitment and dedication of this whole team and everyone who's connected to this summit. Thank you very much for the participation and the invitation. It's been a, an honor and Simran, I say namaste to you and to everyone else and thank you. Namaste, sweetheart Caroline. Thank you, Caroline, for allowing us to travel within ourselves and making us realize that we are all spiritual souls going through this lovely experience of a human being. And trust me, right from the way you made us feel the inner beauty to realize the inner self so that we can be beautiful souls outside. My dear Caroline, thank you so much for sharing such beautiful experience with all the lovely souls from across the world. And the fact that you said that the abundance Mother Earth shares with us in all ways, makes us realize that it's time for us to go within ourselves and feel that love and warmth so that we can bring happiness all around us. So that was truly a beautiful and amazing feeling. Dr. Caroline, thank you so much for being here with us on behalf of Healing Our Earth. I must tell you that we are feeling extremely light with everything you made us feel from within. To all our lovely souls, let me remind you to tell all your loved ones that we are live here on Healing Our Earth website, our YouTube of Healing Our Earth, as well as the Facebook page of Healing Our Earth. We are all together here to celebrate World Environment Day with Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. And moving ahead, we are truly delighted to introduce to all our lovely souls, Bishop Philip Huggins. And we have a lovely message from Huggins. But before that, allow me to introduce Huggins to all your lovely souls. Huggins has hope, observing that local and state governments and the business sector are starting to make the transition to a renewable economy with lower carbon emission. On February 2020, at the 57th session of the World Council of Churches, Commission of Churches on an International Affairs in Brisbane, Australia. He's married to Elizabeth, who's a psychologist, and they have three adult sons with lovely partners. Their children, who they call God's little people, focuses on all the activities of Mother Earth. Can we help them and all the children flourish as is the divine purpose for all creation? We are truly delighted to hear this amazing, lovely message from Huggins for all of us. While he's currently based at All Saints Newton and today, the Sunday, May 31st, is the Feast of Pentecost. So can we please have this lovely message from Huggins for all of us. Namaste. Peace be with you. It's wonderful to be part of this lovely venture as we all seek to have healthier minds and a healthier planet. I'm here with dear son Nick in his music studio and uh, he's going to play some music between the three little reflections that I offer. Thank you, host Simran, for your lovely welcome and introduction. Thank you, Caroline, for your deep reflection 
about the atmosphere in which we're seeking to enhance and improve our quality of life upon the planet. Three little reflections. The first of them, well, I started off doing a university degree in economics and it was at the time that people began walking on the moon for the first time. And our university lecturer sent us over to the university cafe to watch that. And for me, it was a transforming moment. I was about to go and become a tutor in macroeconomics, but I hadn't really realized that actually at a macro level, we we're on a tiny planet in a vast, enormously vast universe, that we we're on this blue and white planet spinning in the vastness of space, and that absolutely everything was a gift. The planet was a gift. The life we had as individuals was a complete gift. A little bit later, I came to appreciate that, that God was the creator of all this and that it was all a complete gift from God and that all God asks of us is to be loving of one another. And uh, compassion is the common ethic of all the world religions and it's a unifying ethic for this time that we're living in. So it took me a while, but that was a transforming moment and it's deepened over time, just to appreciate that we are here given life on this tiny planet and in our case here on the island called Australia. Um, I've been swimming in the colder ocean this morning and uh, now we're back on the island with this wonderful multicultural, multi-faith community that makes up Australia our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and many peoples that have come subsequently. And um, we have the hope and the aspiration to be uh, a sign of how the human family can really flourish well together as we do that with the kangaroos bouncing around and the koalas and the kookaburras in the night evening sky. So let's just begin by being really appreciative afresh of this beautiful, wonderful, astonishing gift of life that we share upon this planet together, one human family, as Nick plays a while and we move into further meditation. So appreciating afresh this wonderful gift of life, this complex time that we're now living in, which requires us as a global family to think carefully about how we have healthier minds and a healthier planet. Here on our island, we've begun to share, prompted by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life, to ponder the connection between our spiritual practice and better intention, good intention, loving intention. So we've been sharing to try and draw that clearer connection between our spiritual practice and how we have the most loving and the best of intentions. And at the subtlest level, recognizing how what we allow ourselves to think about, what shapes is our words, then becomes our actions and over time shapes character and destiny individually and collectively. And how crucial it is to be careful about what we allow ourselves to think about, what we let influence our thinking, 
and how our spiritual practice helps us to be able to think that which is good and true and beautiful and therefore create the atmosphere that could lead to a healthier planet for everybody. So we've been sharing together about that question and we had really good conversations and I've learned lots listening to other folk. One folk told me of his mindfulness practice. He made the analogy to a plane going through the sky and leaving in the clear blue sky that kind of vapor behind. And he said, when he becomes aware of thoughts that are not traveling and gonna take him in a direction he wants to go, he kind of lets them go into the sky and then just dissipate like that vapor dissipates as we watch it in the sky after the plane's gone well past. That's his practice. Another person, this lovely woman, talked about how her imagination was so crucial to her spiritual practice. So in her case, she imagines herself in the many gospel stories as one of the characters in the gospel stories with Jesus, perhaps in the parables, imagines herself as the good Samaritan, imagines herself as the prodigal child, imagines herself in those many community scenes where Jesus asks people various questions. How does she respond to those questions? Her imagining allows her to take on more of the mind of the Holy One and thereby be shaped better in terms of the things that she will be saying and doing. And the same is true in my partnerships with folk of other faith traditions. Uh, at Vesak, I was walking on the beach with a Buddhist friend and listened to him as he talked about the influence of the Buddha's life on the shaping of his own. And during Ramadan with a Muslim friend who shared about how Muhammad's influence in the stories from the sacred texts of the Muslim people was such an influence upon his shaping of his intention in daily life. And so on it goes. The imagination allows us to take in how the Holy Ones have lived and to then let our own lives be shaped by their influence, our intentions thus moulded by their influence as it kind of imagines its way into our whole being. For me personally, mantric meditation is really so important. I've got the kind of temperament that suited, it seems, to mantric meditation. And for me, for now decades, I've practised the Jesus prayer Jesus, have mercy, Jesus, have mercy, to the point where the prayer kind of prays in me now. And I become aware of this wonderful, mysterious connection between name and presence and takes me deeper into the mysteries of the divine love, but is also profoundly practical so that when the thoughts come that might take me in a direction that I do not seek to go, I can replace those thoughts by the power and the beauty in the name, the sacred name, Jesus, have mercy, and thus return to more centered a being with the kind of intentionality of thought, word and action that I hope will be most beneficial. So we can recommend from our little island the sharing of how spiritual practice helps both to create uh, good thoughts, words and actions, but thus in the process create a more nurturing atmosphere, a more creative and imaginative atmosphere to, for the kind of transformation we know our planetary life needs. And we'll come to that in our question of advocacy in a next and final reflection. We're in this perplexing, complex time. People are talking about us heading towards a new normal, and I think it's important to pause and recollect that the old normal, a lot of it was really quite mad. Uh, we were pumping carbon emissions into the atmosphere, global temperatures were rising, the whole of planetary life was at risk because of climate change, biodiversity was being threatened, uh, we continue to have security systems based on weapons of mass destruction, all this is completely mad for the one human family on this precious tiny planet gifted with life. So coming out of this and looking ahead, we have to be good advocates, taking forward 
the aspirations from our spiritual practice into good practical and concrete and deliberate and collective advocacy. And the opportunities are there for us over the next year. The UN Climate Change Conference has been deferred to November next year in Glasgow. We've got the period ahead to try and ensure that each of our nations puts together its best possible contribution to the prevention of global temperatures rising for further. That's what the agreement we seek should be able to implement at the next climate change conference in Glasgow, November 2021. We're in this partnership together uh, with the Brahma Kumari people and the Anglican Communion Environmental Network and the World Council of Churches. We're putting together retreats to try and help the negotiators of these agreements to come up with the best possible outcome for the human family. Also next year, deferred from this year, is the Biodiversity Convention of the United Nations. Again, the endeavour of the human family in the various nation states through its leadership to protect and look after and enhance the biodiversity of the planet, that which is on the land and that which is in the sea, that which depends on us for its life and as we know we depend on the continuation of that diversity for our life. And likewise also before the UN is the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. A number of nations have ratified it and signed it. It needs more nations to ratify and sign it, then it becomes part of international law. And between us and together, we can then eliminate these appalling, awful weapons from anybody's uh, possibility of them exploding upon the human family and destroying more of the biodiversity. These are the kind of advocacies that we're really called upon to, to take part in uh, with healthier minds ourselves and seeking that we might have a healthier planet. Uh, there's a grassroots movement. We're all part of it. Today and through this wonderful time that we're sharing, we can be encouraged, enthused, refreshed in our hope to participate in this global transformation towards a really healthy planet, as is God's divine providence and purpose in our creation. So before I sum up a little more from Nick as we reflect further together. for the gift of life, appreciative for every, every fresh new day and all the possibilities therein to seek to have healthier minds, to share our spiritual practice towards that end and to be good advocates together for a healthier planet. Thank you all for helping me to be part of this. Thank you for your participation and your attentiveness. Back to you, host Simran. And then on to Dr. Janara and Amanda, uh, with gratitude for everybody who's putting their best into this wonderful day, and with gratitude to my dear son Nick for sharing it with me. Peace be with you. Namaste. Peace be with you. That was such a heart-touching message and the divine prayer by 
Bissau Huggins. Thank you so much. And we had Dr. Janara towards the beginning as well. Well, I must say, we're feeling extremely it's light, extremely to light experience to experience that love and warmth within. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to have Armando pretty soon. But for now, moving ahead, we're truly delighted to welcome Vedan Bardwaj, who's a multifaceted musician and a music composer who dabbles in several genres of music, ranging from classical to blues. He sung at several music festivals at prestigious venues, such as the Playhouse Theatre Company, Kala Utsav, Singapore, Malwa Kabi Yatra, the Mumbai Kabi Festival, the Ladakh Music Confluence, amongst others. All right, my lovely friends, well, I'm truly excited to welcome Vedan, who has formerly learned Karnatic, Hindustani, and Western classical music, and currently under the tutelage of Sri Ramamurti Rao. Vedant is the director of the Chennai Children's Chair, a choir of children from economically challenged backgrounds, who represented India at the Serenade Choral Festival and sang at the prestigious Kennedy Center in Washington, DC. I welcome him here at this online summit for Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. So let us please engross ourselves as we wholeheartedly and with a global namaste, welcome Vedan Bardwaj. Namaste, namaste to the entire world. Uh, thank you to uh, healing our world, to giving me this uh, opportunity to be here in front of you and uh, share my music with you all. And uh, what a lovely host we have for today. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'd like to start uh, with uh, a song About that's written. We are constantly calling you. We are all. I'd like to start with a song uh, which is a mashup uh, of two songs. One is written by Swami Chandrasekharendra Saraswati, which is uh, about world peace. And he says that we need to give up uh, war and we need to renounce our ego and we need to come together as one world. And I found that song to go very well in fact, a friend of mine, Akhila Ramnarayan, and I found this song to go very well with John Lennon's Imagine. So, here's this song. A 
by what's only sky Imagine all the people living His Holiness Swami Chandrasekharendra Saraswati says, The earth gives us as much as we require. So let's keep our senses well within control and seek for whatever we need and ask from the world whatever we need and nothing more than that. And this brings me to my next song, which is written by Kabir, a 16th century saint poet. Uh, from the Bhakti and the Sufi tradition. He was regarded as both a Bhakti and a Sufi saint. And the poems that he wrote were very nirguni, a very formless uh, creation. So then in this song, he talks about the swan that flies up high in the sky, all alone. The swan is often referred to our soul. So when one passes on and our swan flies up high in the sky, and when we look down onto the earth, the whole world looks like a celebration. And just like how a leaf is blown away by the wind from the tree, we never really know when we will ever meet again. The messengers of death come at the right time and they're very good at the job that they do. That is to take one's life. But then when it's time to go, we always feel that there could have been some more time. Finally, Kabir says that um, you may be a guru or a student, but what really matters is what you do. And in Indian mythology, uh, your own guru, uh, 
resides within you. Indian spiritual texts always say that your own guru resides inside you. So it could be your soul, it could be your conscience, it could be your intuition. So don't let that go in one way and your life and thoughts go in another. So this song was set to tune by the legendary Pandit Kumar Gandhar. Ha 
मन से अकेला so thank you <laughs> it was so beautiful you know it always says hans ur jayega you know the doha of kabidas where we actually feel like being free and flying having the free spirit that was so beautiful such a beautiful amazing fusion of john lennon and getting the indian classical music together and this is what healing our earth says to everyone that we are all one and it is always love and kindness that truly matter in the world well that was really amazing vedant bharwaj and put a request armando and uh, thank you vedant then i can see thank it all you. on your face thank and your you. smile wow it says it to all it was very very so we touching thank you very very so we touching thank request. you i hope you can hear me request this be sure that this time yeah, i think It'll all can you hear me now? Oh, how you doing? Thank you, Armando. How are you doing? Thank you, Armando. My pleasure, indeed. I hope you can hear us now. Namaste. I send my love to all of you. Namaste. My respects to the traditional landowners, which I stand in with my friend. Sam McNally. I just want to say, with the with the COVID nineteen around all of us, I watch us walk down the streets and watch everybody divert from everybody and look down at the ground, and nobody will look at you, and no one will give you any love or any any of themselves. And I'm saying, look them in the eye. You don't have to talk to them. You don't have to give them anything. Just acknowledge the fact that we're in this love together. And like a diamond ring, it's a precious thing. You never wanna lose it. It's like a song we hear on the radio. Every time we hear it, we're in this love together. We got the kind that lasts forever. We're in this love together, like a berry on the vine, sweeter all the day. Like a rainy night by candlelight, who would hold you so close? You know it's all going to work out great this time. Don't you know? But just the way we planned it, we get this love together. We got the kind that lasts forever. Don't you know? We made this love together, like the berries on the vine, sweeter all the day.
Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so really much. Really thoughts and really solaces the soul during these challenging times and even during any emotional trauma that we're going through. But I must thank Armando Hurley for really taking us on a different level altogether. This is called going on a natural yeah, high. This is called going, going on a natural high. Thank you so much. There was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. There was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, to our lovely people, healthy mind, healthy planet. This global online summit, which is filled with knowledge, inspiration, music, meditation, is brought to you by Healing Our Earth and Enrich TV in cooperation with Brahma Kumaris. And please do tell all your loved ones to please be, we are absolutely live on our Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on our website, www.healingourearth.com. And I'm truly delighted to introduce to all your lovely people to the very energetic and young doctor from UK. May we please welcome one of our co-hosts for today, Dr. Lalit Soda. Well, he graduated from the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, Toronto, Canada in 1990. He's also qualified with the Spine Research Institute of San Diego in the master's program in whiplash injuries. Hence, he has a keen interest in treating patients with whiplash injuries. Dr. Ladit Soda also prepares medical legal reports for insurance companies and their patients. Over the years, he has the privilege of treating numerous singers, dancers, performers, at Wembley Arena before and after their performances. He's here to take you on once again a great high with this very, very wondrous Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet Summit. Namaste, Dr. Lalit Soda. I'm so delighted to welcome you. Greetings to you. Namaste to you, Simran. It's always a pleasure to work with you on this platform. So thank you for this wonderful introduction. A global namaste to you and to the globe that's viewing us today on Facebook, on YouTube. Let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this amazing summit celebrating the World Environment Day on the 5th of June. And the Healing Our Earth team has put up this amazing line of speakers, meditation, music, for this day today, healthy mind, healthy planet. So without taking too much of your time, we have our next guest who is ready with us, Srinidhi. Om Shanti to you, Srinidhi, and to all the Brahma Kumaris and all the soulful beings on this earth. Om Shanti to you all. Our next speaker, Brahma Kumari Srinidhi has been involved with uh, and living with the Brahma Kumaris International Headquarters in Mount Abu uh, and dedicated his life totally to the cause and work of the Brahma Kumaris uh, teachings in 2009. With his background as management professional, he volunteers full-time as a deputy manager, training and development at the Global Hospital Research Center, a not-for-profit healthcare trust initiated by Brahma Kumaris. The trust runs 10 institutions, including seven hospitals. As a facilitator for Spotlight uh, Values, workshops as part of UN International Year of the Youth in 2011. He facilitated workshops at various places in India and special interest on the green theme. Yeah, compassion in action. He represented the Brahma Kumaris at the United Nations World Conference on Youth in 2014. Truly delighted to invite our next speaker, Sri Nidhi. Welcome to you on this summit. 
a global namaste and om shanti to you namaste thank you very much lali ji and indeed it's a pleasure to be here on uh, this special occasion where we are thinking about uh, what our planet is going through and what we can do to heal it and healing our planet involves uh, a lot of things one of the first things that we should understand is uh, if we understand that we need to heal it we must also understand what is wrong with it and uh, for that we must understand that our lives as human beings um, is very special uh, i would say humans exist within a web of life and uh, when i say web of life we are connected to each other not just as human beings but we are also connected to uh, everything in the nature and um, with the recent events that have unfolded we have understood that our connection um, is much more deeper than we understand what we do our simple actions have the effect on the environment and um, we are responsible for climate change as what scientists have been telling us but like i said um, we exist in the web of life and this web is complex and it is connected with the system which Uh, where each person each individual each organism plays a part and each of it is an important role when one component is changed or um, just one player is removed from it the whole play falls down and that is what we are seeing that our system is being affected now as we see it some of us have more or less understood its impact more widely than others and some of us have been consciously trying to make efforts to change our lifestyles in the recent event we have also um, seen studied and understood that the human action has reduced the biodiversity and modified the wildlife population structure in the last 50 years itself the earth's population has um, increased four times and um, of course with that the global global economy has grown our needs have grown the trade the global trade has grown and globalization has grown but each year the growth that we mark also shows as a scary picture that the planet that we have uh, can only cater to so much and in a very recent survey that i was reading it was mentioned that with the current rate of consumption that we human beings are consuming things um with this rate we would require 1.6 times the current earth to meet the demands of the human population that we have and um, like this we will not survive for more than 15 years so one of the things that we all understood is that our consumption patterns have to change but like we all understand changes are not easy each change presents its own challenges and it requires a very very concentrated effort to bring about a change since i speak from india i quote a very famous personality whom the world sees as a messenger of peace and a postal of peace for that matter mahatma gandhi he said that you should become the change that you want to see in the world and if today we want to see a better world if we want to heal our planet the answer is right in front of us that we need to change not just we as humanity but we meaning me and you and each every individual and when we talk about this this is where we have to relook at our choices we have to relook at the ways that we look at life we have to relook at the way how we consume things most often um we had seen that the cost of healthcare since i work in a hospital we thought that the cost of healthcare is also something that we should talk about because we're talking about a healthy planet a planet is only healthy if its people are healthy if we let alone forget about the species plants and animals of this planet if you just look at the human health of the planet then also we are not in a good condition today and with the emergence of new viruses new bacteria new diseases we all know that um, we are in a very difficult position where we cannot guarantee human health as well since this is the case 
we also have to focus on the cost of building a better health for the planet. And over the years, we have all understood that if we eat natural food, if we are closer to nature, then the chances are that we would have a healthier lifestyle and we would be much more healthy people. We at the Brahmakumaris believe that the problem that we see in the world today originates from our awareness. It's about what we think matters a lot. We all want to make a change in the world, which is a good thing. We have come to a realization no matter what, no matter what the situations we were put through, we have come to a thinking point where we have guessed right, we have arrived to a conclusion saying that, okay, now is the time and now I have to rethink about my priorities. Very few of us have also understood this, that my life as it used to be before is not the same anymore. And especially the COVID-19 crisis has brought us to a better understanding of these things. If I should put it um, very simply, that each one of us today on the globe is thinking about what his or her role is, how we can do something to better the situation that is there today. Many people were also suggesting that here in India, we have always respected nature. We have always had a higher thought of nature. We have always looked upon nature as a deity, as a source of giving. We all understand that the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the climate that is around us makes the planet habitable to all of us. Yet these are exceptional times in which nature is sending us a message. And the message is quite clear that the message is we must care for ourselves, but we cannot care for ourselves if we cannot care for our home. And since Earth is our home, it is time to wake up. It is time to take notice of what we are doing, not just in terms of our actions, but also in terms of what led to those actions. Like we all know, our thoughts are the origins of our action. What we think later on transforms into action. And this is what is the Brahma Kumaris have always been telling, that if you look at your thoughts, if you reevaluate them, if you can observe your own thoughts and change them, then you are directly changing your actions. Of course, as an organization, the Brahma Kumaris issues these things. The issues that we see are not just issues on the surface, but the issues are the holistic ones. If you look at the whole picture, then you would have a better understanding of how things are. The Brahma Kumaris see that the change of this downfall or downward spiral requires a deep shift in human consciousness, the awareness of how we hold things. And if we bring about a change in that, then probably we can also reverse this loss. Humanity and we as human beings have always looked up to nature for rejuvenation. Most of us, if we want to take a holiday, some of us would run to the hill stations to escape the heat of the summer in India, of course. And some of us, if we felt too cold during the winter, we would run to the beaches, run to the ocean side. No matter what the season be, but we have always been nourished by mountains, forests, waterfalls, and rivers. Anything that had had natural beauty has always replenished our spirits. Yet today we come to this question that when we have taken so much of replenishment, of rejuvenation from nature, if nature were to come back to us as a person and ask us, it is time for you to rejuvenate me. It is time for you to replenish me. Do we have the answer? Are we ready for it? The replenishment, the rejuvenation that the nature provided was not a physical one. Of course, there were physical aspects to it as well, but what nature would do to us when we put our feet into the beach, into the waters of the ocean, would be, it would be the soothing effect it would have on our minds. When we would go to the mountains, when we would look at them, the eyes would feel cooler, but something inside our souls would also be soothed. What is it? 
is something that we should think about. And the Brahma Kumaris see this as one's original awareness of who the person is. What we are in terms of our surface, in terms of what we see outside, is not all. As we have always heard that the beauty lies in the eyes of beholder, we are that beholder who have held that beauty. And today it is important to recognize our original selves as that beholder, as someone who has seen those things. And today let us see things in a better light. What more can we do? There are many things that we can do. And today, when we are here talking about healing the planet, what more can we heal? We can start with ourselves. We could start with healing ourselves. We have also understood that if a person is angry, if a person is agitated, he does not care about the environment. A person who is angry would naturally not care about switching off lights or switching off his car or think about consuming less because there are other things going on in mind. And only if a person is calm, if he is peaceful, only then he or she would care for other things around him or her, whether it would be nature, whether it be other animals, species, plants, or just our consumption patterns. And we all know that meditation is a tool that helps oneself to calm oneself, to bring a positive outlook to things. And since it is a tested tool for transformation, each one of us can exercise. Each one of us can use these tools to bring about a change in ourselves. We can use meditation as a means of healing ourselves and a means of healing our planet. With that, I believe that each one of us is capable of doing meditation. Whether we call it prayer, whether we call it meditation, we call the same thing by different names. And here in India, like I was saying, many people for centuries have believed and said that nature gives us so much, so we should have gratitude for it. And I remember a shloka that I used to listen to when I was young, that whenever a ceremony, a religious ceremony was completed, the Mangalashtaka was sung. It is a very simple hymn that mentions Gagana Mangalam, Bhumi Mangalam, Agni Mangalam, Vayu Mangalam, Antariksha Mangalam, Atma Mangalam, Deha Mangalam, Sarva Mangalam Bhavatu Bhavatu Bhavatu. That means, may the earth be beneficial to you. May the ether be beneficial to you. May the water be beneficial to you. May the fire be beneficial to you. May the air be beneficial to you. May the body and the soul be beneficial to you. May there be beneficial, benefactory deeds for everybody in the universe. Such a noble thought emerged from this land and it is the ancient yoga that has always and always taught people to be happy with what they have, to look at things in a better way, to look at things in a holistic way, to not think about the self first, but to think about everybody connected with you in the same place. Only when we look at the whole picture can we really heal ourselves and heal the planet. With that, I would like to invite you all to a small meditation so that we could send out our good vibrations, our good thoughts, our ways of sending good and positive energies to the world, to the people of this world, and to every living being on this planet. Yeah, well, let me say thank you very much, Srinidhi. That was a, a very illuminating talk, enlightening talk, and really brings out the points of importance of awareness. 
really got to be aware with what we do. Our thoughts are so important. And I always remember the good saying by our sister Shivani, who says, Sankalpa se srishti, such an important saying that our thoughts will um, come out as our action. Amazing talk, Sri Nidhi. Om Shanti to you. Moving on to our next speaker. We are actually moving from India to the Philippines to introduce our next speaker, Rainer Ivana. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Rainer. He's an amazing gentleman who actually teaches philosophy and environmental ethics at Ateneo de Manila University in the Philippines, where he serves as the editor of Buddhi. Buddhi is a journal of ideas and culture. He was the chair of UNESCO, COMEST, World Commission for the Ethics of Science and Technology, working on the group on environmental ethics from 2013 to 2017. And he coordinated the UNESCO's South-South Philosophical Dialogues for the Asia-Pacific region in 2015. He was UNESCO's educator for MOOC, M-O-O-C, course on climate justice, lessons from the global South, hosted by Future Learn. Absolutely excited to invite a super gentleman, Rainer. Rainer, a global namaste to you and welcome to Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. Namaste. Good evening from the Philippines. Mm. I have uh, prepared something um, to help me um, outline my presentation. This is a painting by one of our painters, uh, Balmes. There. Mm. And I have the title of my uh, presentation on the left. It is called The Fruits of a Healthy Life. And then I put carrot their life, our mind and the planet. I inserted the word life because in our country, when we celebrate or when we greet people who are coming in or when we have a big festival, we uh, say mabuhay no? as a group or even as an individual, which translates as long live. No? We wish you a long life or in Spanish, we shout viva. No? So, so it's a, it, the foundation of health is, of course, life, you know? uh, both the planet and our individual persons as uh, human beings, but also as thinking beings, because we, are, we would like to talk about uh, the life of the mind, the title of the, the, lecture, the uh, big presentation for your uh, program is a healthy mind and a healthy Planet. So I will use uh, uh, the both mind and planet uh, in terms of health. You know? And to be able to do that, uh, let me just give you an outline of my presentation. Uh, I will talk about generosity, gratitude, and communion. You know? And I have here... Uh, bag of fruits, just to let you know, uh, when I talk about uh, the uh, fruits of a healthy life, no? uh, we will talk about fruitfulness, no? about our, the fruitfulness of our thoughts and the fruitfulness of our planet. No? So we look at the world of nature or the planet as a way of understanding our mind. No? a way of thinking. No? So the, the first thing that uh, we would like to talk about is this whole notion of thinking, of conception of the mind. The word conception itself is biological. We conceive no? of an idea no? when as if our mind is impregnated by an experience, by an encounter with reality we are excited, we produce 
an insight or an idea. We translate what we receive through our senses into an idea. Sometimes we have a seminal insight you know, about reality. We, our mind penetrates reality. You know? We have a seminal insight and we let that insight grow within us to build a theory, a possibility. You know? But then the theories must be tested. And this is where fruitfulness comes in. We cannot just keep on thinking or imagining. We have to test whether our ideas are true or false. No? And that is where fruitfulness comes in. We again use a metaphor from nature, no? fruitfulness. What does fruitfulness mean no? in terms of our uh, life of the mind? No? Fruitfulness means that nature is generous. Nature gives us feedback. That nature acts on us. No? And so when we are thinking, we need that action from nature to verify or to falsify our ideas, our seminal insights, before it, we can conceive of anything. No? So when, when nature is generous in giving us uh, some kind of feedback, no? Uh, we are able to say yes or no, or nature itself says yes or no to what we are thinking. No? But if it says yes, then we continue with our pursuit. We continue with our thinking, with the possibilities of what our thoughts can do. So that's the second thing, no? generosity. Nature is generous and so, uh, when this is generosity happens, uh, it becomes helpful, it makes sense, you know? we understand something, you know? because nature told us so. You know? But the second point I would like to uh, mention is that when we are given by nature with a gift of insight, with an idea, you know? generosity, our response is gratitude. We thank nature. We become thankful of this gift from nature. In other words, we see something good because we will not thank anything if it is not good. Even if it's bad, we see something good in it. That's why we, we thank it. We see something providential. Nature provides. Even if something wrong happened accidentally, in the long run, we see that this is good. No, this is providential. Nature provided us with something. We learned a lesson. If we make a mistake or we are falsified or we are rejected, uh, we learn something from it. But even that learning is something that we can be thankful for because it is good. So the second point I want to raise is generosity. First is generosity. The second is gratitude because of that generosity. As a consequence of that uh, generosity and gratitude, we are able to achieve communion with nature or maybe communion with others. We are able to communicate what we have thought. We are able to say what we have thought and others can, can say yes or no also. Or we, are, we come to an understanding in that deep meaning of understanding, in that emotional meaning, I understand. You know? because there is some kind of communion. No? But that communion is not just quietism or silence. We don't know if what we understood is mystical or a mistake unless it is communicated. No? We talk about it, we discuss. No? That's why uh, in this painting, we have three women, the ladies here, uh, communicating to each other sharing their sorrows probably or their sufferings of the day, you know? But before that, we have gratitude. This man uh, is grateful because it's, pro it's probably a Sunday. He's able to do something or he, he, has, he is a cup fighter. You know, he's going to the cockpit. You know? uh, and the fruits, it's a sign of generosity. But the last point I want to say is communion. You know? When Truth reveals itself when we understand something because of its generosity. Uh, we are thankful.
but also we are in communion with others. We are in communion with nature. We are in communion with other people. We come to an agreement. We come to an understanding. No? So those are the, the three, three points I want to raise, I want to uh, share with you. Uh, it's a lesson from nature about how we think, about our mind. No? A healthy mind is fruitful. A healthy mind can understand. A healthy mind can come to an agreement with others, to a mutual understanding with others. So those are the three points that I would like to share. But in order to conclude this uh, sharing, I would like to tell you a story. No? Uh, around two weeks ago, we, we, were, we were in quarantine here in the Philippines. And I went out of the building. I wanted to go and buy something. So I took on uh, my, my, my mask. I put my mask on. And then I went to uh, downstairs to the lobby of our, uh, our building. And as I was going out, the security guard handed me a note. So I got the note with my left hand. And as I was reaching out to him, he sneezed. He sneezed on my left hand, as on, on the piece of paper that he was giving me. No? So what will I do? No? Should I get mad? No? Uh, should I report him to the, uh, the authorities? No, that's not the way to do it. So I went, I, went, I washed my hands and put some alcohol, etc. And I bought him some coconut oil no, to help him fight the whatever his, uh, whether it's a virus or a bacteria. And I gave him some food. No. Because what he did is involuntary. He was not deliberate. No, why, why should I be mad at him? No. But I should help him to sustain himself, to keep his Im immunity, to strengthen his immunity. And the more he becomes immune, the more I will be protected also. So I, I usually bring masks because some people don't have masks. They cannot afford it. So if I share my mask, if I am generous to others, I do not only protect myself, no, I only, do not only protect them, I also protect myself. And I protect them if I wear my mask also. So if I am generous, so it's an act of generosity. But because of that act of giving him food and uh, because we, we need our security people, no? And, and they have to be immune. And we all have to be, to strengthen our immunity. We, if we are going to live normal lives, the viruses will, will always be there. No? But if we, uh, we have, we sleep well, we eat well, we exercise, then we can live with it, no? But we have to be careful also. We have to, as for as long as there's no vaccine, no? So we can live with others because of that, generosity he became my friend and uh, life goes on and uh, so we are waiting for a vaccine now and we will hopefully have some kind of normal life no? so that's the story of life no? life as uh, generous grateful and communion or communicative, the life of the human community, the life of the planet in communion with themselves and with, our, with others, with, with ourselves and end of nature. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rainer. That was an amazing message. Moving on from the Philippines, we are all the way going into Hong Kong. So getting into Hong Kong, we're meeting a lovely lady, Ayako Ichimaru. And she's originally from Japan, settled in Hong Kong, made her new home there. She has performed at very special venues and orchestras, such as the White House in Washington, DC, the United Nations in the New York, and the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. As a charismatic soloist, she has performed all over the world and spread a message with the original music of the peace and happiness within. 
Ayako's music leaves a deep impression um, and special vibrations to the audience as well as the political leaders of the world. She is a cultural ambassador to Hong, of Hong Kong, rather, which is most unusual for a foreigner to be there. Her stunning and beautiful music can be heard in the award-winning Best Parents' Choice Award, ha, uh, Napa Gold Disc Awards in the USA, You Know Awards nomination in Canada, and that is the CD called Five Elements. So without further delay, truly excited to invite Ayako Ichimaru. Ayako, a global namaste to you. Namaste and Om Shanti. It is such a privilege to be back to this meaningful event of healing our earth. Thank you for asking me back. And today the theme is that healthy mind and healthy planet. To me, it starts with together, united as one family of this planet to have whole vision of beautiful, healthy Mother Earth, our planet. And we are anyways, the family of one divine and we are sharing this Mother Earth. So start from holding vision together and we move towards. So today I would like to share my piece called One. I hope you enjoy.
Fletcher. That was excellent, wasn't it? What a talent from Hong Kong. Now we fly off to India. We have got this lovely lady, Priya Bhattacharya. Priya Bhattacharya comes from a small town. Uh, a, a girl from uh, northern eastern part of India, Meghalaya Shillong is where our lovely Priya Bhattacharya is from. Priya started a career at a very early age. First, got the opportunity to work with the eminent composer of Bollywood industry, uh, Nadeem Shravan, a well-renowned uh, music composer, and she got it for the movie called Judai. She's done it for Saatarangke Sapne, Jung, and others. Priya has lent her voice for all the popular title tracks in the television series for Ekta Kapoor, the Balaji telefilms, the most popular one. Priya has been signing, singing rather, for more than 20 years, Bollywood and doing concerts in different parts of India and also been performing abroad. Priya owes her success to her parents who made her whatever she is today. Priya, we look forward to listening to you and singing some lovely melodies for us. So absolutely thrilled to invite Priya Bhattacharya on this Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet event today. A global namaste and Om Shanti to you, Priya Bhattacharya. Thank you, Lalit. Thank you for the lovely introduction. A global namaste and greetings to everybody out there. Well, I am so, so privileged to be a part of this global online summit healthy mind and healthy planet. Well, I'm going to sing a couple of songs. My first song is a very famous song on this part of the world. And the song is Kabi Khushi Kabi Gham, which means sometimes happy, sometimes sad. Here we go. Ah, ah, Meri sansoon Mera jeevan to hai tera saaya Teri pooja karu main to har dam Ye hai tere karam Kabhi khushi kabhi gham Na juda honge hum Kabhi khushi kabhi gham Ye hai tere karam Kabhi khushi kabhi gham Na juda honge hum Kabhi khushi kabhi gham La 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 Subha sham charna meri Dehi dekhe Tujhe ko hi paaye Subha sham charna meri hum chalai Dekhe jaha bhi dekhe Tujhe ko hi paaye In lago pe tera Bas tera in love, better on, busted 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 on, La 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 la
मंदिर है तेरा इसमें सदा रहे तेरा बसेरा ओ ये घर नहीं है मंदिर है तेरा इसमें सदा ही रहे तेरा बसेरा खुशबू से तेरी ये महकता रहे खुशबू से तेरी ये महकता रहे आए जाए भले कोई मौसम ये है तेरे करम कभी खुशी कभी गम नजदा होंगे हम कभी खुशी कभी गम नजदा होंगे हम कभी खुशी कभी गम थैंक यू एंड द सॉन्ग दैट आई एम गोइंग टू सिंग नाउ इज अ स्पिरिचुअल सॉन्ग एंड द सॉन्ग इज इतनी शक्ति हमें देना दाता व्हिच मींस ऑलमाइटी प्लीज गिव अस स्ट्रेंथ Here we go. इतनी शक्ति हमें दे न दाता मन का विश्वास कमजोर होना हम चले एक रास्ते पे हमसे भूल कर भी कोई भूल होना इतनी शक्ति हमें दे न दाता मन का विश्वास कमजोर होना आ दूर क्यों के हो अंधेरे ज्ञान की रोशनी दे हर बुराई से बच के रहे हम हर बुराई से बच के रहे हम जितनी भी दे भली जिंदगी दे अपनी करुणा का जल तू बहा के करते पावन हर एक मन का को हम चले नेक रस्ते पे हमसे भूल कर भी कोई भूल होना इतनी शक्ति हमें दे न दाता मन का विश्वास कमजोर होना हमने सोचा हमें क्या मिला है हमें सोचे किया हमने क्या है अपने करुणा का जल तू बहा के करते पावन हर एक मन का को हम चले नेक रस्ते पे हमसे भूल कर भी कोई भूल होना इतनी शक्ति हमें दे न दाता मन का विश्वास कमजोर होना इतनी शक्ति हमें दे न दाता मन का विश्वास कमजोर होना मन का विश्वास कमजोर होना मन का विश्वास कमजोर होना थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग टू माय सॉन्ग्स थैंक यू अ ग्लोबल नमस्ते टू ऑल ऑफ यू थैंक यू Thank you Priya that was absolutely mesmerizing my Thank god you. goddess saraswati resides within you the way you sing you have really Thank done you. justice Thank you Thank you so much Thank you so much Lalit 
and thank you for all the lovely words that you have spoken about me. And it's a privilege, it's really, really a privilege for me to be a part of this global online summit. Thanks to everybody and a global namaste once again to you all. Thank you. Healing, healing Our Earth is very proud and privileged to have you with us, uh, Pri uh, uh, Priya. Thank so you. thank you Thank you once you. again. I mean, both your songs, Kabhi Khushi Gaan, uh, we're listening to you. It's always Kabhi Khushi, Kabhi Khushi. It's always Khushi Khushi. There is no gum. And the, the yeah. power of praise, the itni shakti hame dena data, absolutely wonderfully sang. So thank you thank very you. much. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Moving thank on you. from India. We are actually changing the continent of Indian continent to the African continent, going into South Africa. And we are very delighted today to meet uh, Pratibha Daya. Om Shanti Pratibha. Let me give you a few, a few words of introduction for her, and then we can introduce her to come on live. Pratibha Daya is a facilitator and a teacher with the Raj Yoga Meditation with the Brahma Kumaris. Well, she is also associated, well, she is associated with the Brahma Kumari, a world spiritual university since 1986. She's currently based in Johannesburg, while her work takes her into other cities in South Africa and the neighboring countries. Pratima served on the board of parliament of the world religions held in Cape Town in 1993 and as a council member on the Western Cape uh, Religious Leaders Forum. She was a part of a three-part documentary series entitled The Sacred Secrets of Nature, which explored the sacred relationships with the earth and the human consciousness aired on SABC in 2016. Pratibha has an easy natural and a light approach to life and is able to share deep spiritual concepts with simplicity and clarity. Truly excited to invite on board today Pratibha Daya all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. Om Shanti to you and a global namaste. Namaste, and uh, it's really an honor for me to be here with all of you uh, with this beautiful program that's been arranged with uh, a healthy mind, healthy planet. Um, when I was reflecting on this topic of um, healing the planet, um, I was reminded of my time when I lived in Cape Town. Um, Cape Town, as many of you may know, is a beautiful city. It's abundant with nature. But one of the features that always happens there is that every year uh, there would be the wildfires. And within a span of a few days, you would see forests and land masses destroyed by the fire. And it would look so devastating. But it's amazing, within a week or so, you would find that new green just emerges. And very shortly, the earth rejuvenates herself so beautifully. So when we think about healing our planet, we can see one thing that Mother Nature has a very incredible capacity to rejuvenate herself that within mother nature there's this awareness and there's this principle of the flow of life from birth to growth to death and birth again and so one thing that we have all observed with the COVID-19 crisis that when we give the earth a chance when human activity begins to pause for a moment or two we can see how quickly and easily and naturally, the planet heals, the earth heals. So the question is, what needs the healing? The earth has a capacity to restore herself, but the healing that's needed is the healing of human hearts. And when we look at it that within our connections with each other, our relationships with each other, 
uh, our hearts have become fragmented. It has become fragmented through the, the default lines, basically, of race and religion and class and color, etc. And so one aspect that we need to really work on at a deeper level is the healing of our hearts. Letting go that this kind of separation that we had created between us, this separation um, has left a deep impact on our hearts. And so when we begin to heal our hearts, in a sense, and that begins with, with the subject of forgiveness. And I thought of bringing up this aspect because really, as we release ourselves from the pain of the past, uh, we then allow for something new to give birth and to re be, and to be recreated again. Uh, we allow for a new level of connectedness, which is so important and necessary. And I do feel that if human hearts heal and come together and we begin to see each other for what we really are and feel that sense of connectedness between us, then that in itself will change our relationship with the planet as well. There's a lovely story that I would like to share at this point. Um, there was an anthropologist that was studying um, some of the more rural tribes in, in a certain part of Africa. And so one day what he did, he took a basket of apples and he placed it under a tree. And he asked a group of young children uh, to race towards the basket. They were about 100 meters away. And he said that the one who gets to the basket first will get all the apples. And so then he said, ready, steady, go. And to his amazement, he saw that the children held each other's hands and they ran together to the basket. And they sat around the basket and they shared the apples and enjoyed it together. And so he was stunned. And so he asked, why did you do that? And he shared, and the children looked at him and very naturally shared, it's Ubuntu, which really means that I am because we are. And because who we are, that is who I am. The individual is defined by the collective and the collective defines the individual. And so I think this is an ancient wisdom that tells us that one cannot be happy at the expense of the other. If one is left deprived or unhappy, then it impacts me too. And so when we talk about uh, the reconnection of human hearts, uh, the healing of human hearts, it's about coming back to this ancient wisdom of the interconnectedness between us. And I feel that as we heal our relationships between us, it will have a very profound and natural impact in terms of how we begin to relate with the earth as well. That we stop seeing the earth just as a resource that we need to um, you know, plunder from <laughs> or, or use for our own benefit. But we see the earth as a resource, as, as, as a very integral part of who and what we are. And so just really reconnecting with this aspect that um, it's about shifting the way we see ourselves and our relation both to each other and the earth. So where does this healing begin from? And how do we begin to, to, to let go of, of the past? We speak about um, forgiveness, and we know that when there's forgiveness, then it allows for newness. It allows for uh, a new way of relating and reconnecting. 
But to get to that point of really forgiving and forgetting and coming back to a place of um, a deeper level of truth and beauty, it begins by us really beginning to look at ourselves and seeing that how we've defined ourselves that has been based on the external is the root of what's led to our division between us. That beneath the exterior of body and beneath the exterior of even culture and beneath the exterior of even religion, we are consciousness within. And that consciousness is light. And that the true nature of that consciousness is peace and love and purity. And as we return back to that original awareness of ourselves, that spiritual awareness of ourselves, we begin to awaken and ignite a deeper um, truth within ourselves. And in that truth, we begin to experience our own deeper security in who and what we are. And that feeling of internal security that I am a soul, I am consciousness, I cannot be destroyed. And I'm here as a guest on this planet. Um, I own nothing and yet I have everything that I need that is within me as a being. And so as we begin to create this awareness and experience this reality of ourselves as a soul, it helps us then to let go of the attitudes and the memories that has separated us. But further as well, that what it enables us to do is that it opens us to connect with that one source, that eternal parent of all souls, that we are one family, we belong to each other, and this is our temporary home for all of us not just one. And as we share our spaces together, um, that's where we begin to really enjoy and celebrate our diversity. Rather than seeing the difference between us as reasons for separation, but we see the difference as complementing us, of bringing us more together. And so healing the planet healing the earth is really about healing our hearts, letting go of the past and coming back to the essence of who we really are as God's children, as the children of the divine and, um, and reconnecting with that truth so that we can really feel a deeper sense of our interconnectedness and celebrate who we are together as a human family. So uh, with those few words, uh, I would like to take us into um, a short meditation so that we can begin to experience and feel that connectedness between us. Okay. So I invite you to just sit comfortably and just for a moment, taking a deep breath Become very present in just being aware of your body and just allow yourself to relax. Let go of any tightness. Just feel the earth supporting you. Feel the air gently touching your skin. In this moment with each breath, just let each in-breath be an invitation to peace, an invitation to calmness, an invitation to love. And as you breathe out, release, let go. 
anything that's old, anything that doesn't serve me anymore, any memories of the past, release. Imagine your mind to be like the clear blue sky, clean, wide, and serene. And in this quietness and in this silence, gently take your awareness to the core of your being that beneath the skin within this body I am consciousness and to hold this awareness that I am consciousness see yourself is a point of soft divine light. I am light. I am eternal. I am pure consciousness. And as we return to this pure awareness of ourselves, very naturally, we begin to feel the heart opening. And that it's natural that within the heart, is an abundance of love. Who I am is a soul. I begin to sense that every other being is also a soul. My eternal brother, sister. We are all children of the one divine. And so in this awareness of soul, in this awareness of being consciousness, in this awareness of our true connectedness with each other, there's love, there's peace, there's the healing. And it's very natural to feel that we are held by the love and light of the divine. One God, one family. So just take a moment in silence and hold this deep feeling of the love and connectedness between us. Of the love of the divine holding us and of the peace that brings us together to heal our planet. Thank you. So namaste, and it's been a pleasure to be with all of you, and my best wishes as this program and many of programs of this nature continues to bring our planet together. Thank you. Om Shanti. Sister Pratibha Daya, thank you very much for this lovely meditation that you took all of us through. I was just gone. It was amazing. Thank you so, so much. We remember your words and you say a healthy mind, healthy planet. 
what do we heal? Healing our earth, but heal our hearts, as you said. Amazing. And the little story with the children, Ubuntu, sharing those apples. I am, we are. Amazing. Ancient wisdom that is so prevalent, but we don't make use of that. So once again, thanking, to, thanking you for bringing that to our attention. It's an amazing summit in conjunction with Brahma Kumaris today. And it was really nice to be in South Africa with you. We still remain in South Africa and we go on to our lovely next speaker. And her name is Lydia Machaka. Lydia, let's tell, tell you all about Lydia, a wonderful soul, a wonderful lady. She has recently studied her MSc in environmental psychology at the University of Surrey in the United Kingdom. She also completed her MA in anthropology degree in the field of biocultural diversity and conservation with Rhodes University in 2012. She is the climate justice and energy policy at the CIDSE, an international family of Catholic social justice organizations. She's now based in Pretoria. She's always passionate about her understanding the human nature relationship and is keen to challenge herself and others to value the planet more and to remain positive. And she quotes, we need to take conscious living very seriously into our everyday lives. Doing so will ensure that we do not neglect our other communities that we live in, and it motivates us to care, to love, and to act towards a healthy and a sustainable future. After all, Lydia, I love this. You say, it's all in our hands. Lydia, welcome to you on the board on Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. A global namaste from the whole globe to you, Lydia. Namaste and welcome on board. Thank you, Dr. Latiel, for the introduction. Namaste. And in my language, we say Jumelan. Indeed, uh, it is a blessing to be a part of the Healing Our Earth Summit. And I would like to begin my offering with the following quotes from Professor Wangari Matai, an environmental activist from Kenya, who was also the first African woman to win the Nobel Prize in 2004. She says, there comes a time where humanity is called to shift to a new level of consciousness. And that time is now. Again, she says, today we are faced with a challenge that calls for a shift in our thinking so that humanity stops threatening its life support system. We are called to assist the earth to heal her wounds and in the process, heal our own. Indeed, to embrace the whole of creation in all its diversity, beauty, and wonder. Recognizing that sustainable development and democracy and peace are indivisible is an idea whose time has become. So in the past week, we have been celebrating Africa, our common heritage. And in the coming weeks, we'll be celebrating World Environment Day. I wanted to say in the midst of COVID-19 uh, pandemic it, and during these difficult times that we should understand and embrace who we are, who we are also becoming and how that shapes the environment around us and vice versa. I'm saying that because since the onset of the coronavirus pandemic, it is easy for one to fall into the trap of constantly creating and dwelling in a pool of negative thought. It is almost inevitable to be trapped into an infinite fearful thinking. For example, this could be thoughts about the past mistakes, broken relationships, thoughts about things that might go wrong or, or in fact are going wrong and the thoughts of being alone and lonely, particularly when we experience a sense of loss, making it difficult to imagine a positive future. So this might hit home, especially to those who are living in poverty. And here, I mean those who might be financially, spiritually, and socially poor. We quickly judge ourselves constantly, and that diminishes our health and well-being. And I remember the, uh, during the first 21 days of lockdown, uh, when it was announced in South Africa, people were thinking about the possibility of establishing new norms. 
And today we need to be careful not to inherit uh, self-destructive norms into the future. In the days of social distancing, it is even more important for us to stay connected to our true identity. So before we embrace our identity, I think it is very important that we understand who we are first. I would like to draw your attention to, yes, again, the ancient history of Ubuntu or the ancient philosophy, because it is a fundamental belief or principle that encompasses who we are as human beings. And we relate with other living beings in ways that I will discuss later on. So according to Professor Ramose, one of the remarkable African philosophers of our time, this Nguni word Ubuntu is made out of two aspects. The prefix Ubu and the suffix Ntu. So the first part, Ubu, evokes an idea of, living, of, of a living being or a sense of being in the world without a definitive form or a definite form. And the second element, Ntu, which it is translated into our existence. So in this context, I like what the, His Excellency Bishop Lekhanyan has said. He proposes that Ubuntu is a form of humaneness that obliges one to be humane, respectable, and benevolent towards other living beings. Bear in mind, I'm not talking about humanity, but I'm talking about anything that lives. The obligation to be humane towards others is a fundamental ethical imperative that promotes life and not destruction or death. So therefore, our journey of life involves a journey of continuous reflection, discovery, and improving oneself to become an embodiment of Ubuntu. In African philosophy, this is what makes us human beings. He goes on further to emphasize, and I quote, this obligation of humanness is not limited to you in space and time. Instead, is a sense of identity that is based on other living beings, including human beings, here now and beyond, as far as there is existence. So this is unlimited existence. This existence or being is formed in community with other living beings. This is best captured by a saying that is very popular uh, in, uh, in, in Debele or Zulu. It says, umtu umuntu kabantu. And in my language, moto kimoto kabatu. When translated to English, it literally means I am because we are. So this community comprises of all living beings that exist and those that will ever become. And this community is rooted in our interrelationship or what he calls peaceful coexistence with the natural environment. So in other ways, this is an integrated system of interdependence and balance. And sometimes many people know it as one way of life. So I would like to actually draw your attention to some ex uh, excerpts and themes that I've drawn from a phenomenological study that I conducted in the period of 2012 and 2013 that demonstrate this interrelationship with self, others, and the natural environment. And this was taken from experiences of local people from the Amatosa in the rural and peri-urban areas in the Eastern Cape. So these experiences uh, in nature elicit a positive sense of connectedness, peace, and spiritual satisfaction or nourishment, which develops with their interaction with the forest. And you might actually hear them refer to Ishati, which, is, um, um, which means forest in is course, one of the local languages. The first theme was really talking about the experiences in nature, which involves appreciating and enjoying and the fascination and the silence, the stillness, and at times, not only the silence, but also the sounds in the atmosphere, and it, which provides unique perspectives and bring restorative effects that improve personal well-being. For example, there's a quote from one of the participants. He said, or she said, it is peaceful there, as I like the cool atmosphere that is there. There is cool water that is clean and fresh because it comes from the rocks underneath the, sh uh, the shade of, of Ishat, that's the forest. I love to just view the botanical features, the growth, the structures, the complex patterns, the colors of the trees, and the different smells of the flowers from different plants. 
I listen to the songs of the birds. I also carefully observe and admire the flowing and the splashing of the water while I sit and watch the water flow down the streams. You are aware that you develop a peace as you, you develop peace as you are busy watching and listening to that all. You feel peaceful. You feel the difference because you are in a distinctive place. That is nature. You begin to feel some changes and at the same time you feel a particular happiness from within because you are alone and you feel that everything blends together to create that internal happiness. It is a pleasant feeling and it is a unique. That's how it is. I would like to also draw a, a, another example. Uh, she said, when there is a problem, you think about ways of solving a problem. It becomes complicated and overwhelming when you're in the house. I mean, when you consider that you don't have anything, you don't have any coin in your pocket and you're frustrated, then you go to in Itlati to get fresh air. What is important to me every time is to build myself to be umdu and a man among others. Just like now, I don't spoil my reputation and humanity by drinking myself to death. I'm not doing anything self-destructive. I'm just always sober like this. I look after my health cautiously. That's what I like about Ishad. And that's important for me as a closer man. One of the greatest objective is to build from and maintain health that you were created or ordained for. You shouldn't waste it or play with it. Instead, you should maintain it by treating it uh, well. I would like to also, uh, in the interest of time, just say uh, one more quote. The, somebody said, the dam is very big and you can swim nicely in it. The best part is being further deep in the water, right in the center, because it feels very appropriate. You feel like a mermaid, like you feel like you belong in the dam. Serious, it is not the same water that has chemicals like here, but it is water from nature. It is natural, you feel human, you feel like a person. It is as if it provides a healing uh, deep within you. So what happens when we don't embrace this twin identity? I wanted to actually say that there's a strong positive correlation between our thought processes and the effect it has on our relationship with others around us, including the natural environment. That is when we embrace the reality that we are who we are because of other beings, we begin to realize that causing harm to the natural environment causes harm to the self and what others can ever become. So this has intergenerational implications. Neglecting our relation with the natural environment implies that, implies that we're neglecting an important aspect of our being. Equally important, when we take care of ourselves, we are empowered to take care of the natural environment. So I just wanted to declare that I am who I am today because of those who exist and have ever existed before me that have desired and prayed for my, for my existence and this is what reinforces my humility to others and ultimately to God who created all of us from uh, the earth in our diversity. A much deeper appreciation of our interconnectedness with the planet is therefore indispensable. I conclude by saying namaste and in my language we say tobela. Thank you for listening. Tobera, Lydia, that was so brilliant. What a humble speech that you had and what an important message that you gave out. Quoting a doctor from Kenya, that's where I'm from, lovely African subcontinent. So thank you very much. I love your quote here uh, saying that I am because we are. What a great community spirit that we have in this message. Uh, so Lydia, thank you very much for your amazing talk that we had. Do you know what? We actually, namaste, yes, yes. Namaste to you too. Um, we love South Africa. So you know what? We're still not moving away from South Africa. We're still going to be there. Our next amazing duo speaker are the Desert Rose. 
Oh my God, that's Lynn and Yusuf. Okay, let's hear a little bit about Lynn and a little bit about Yusuf and what these guys have done. These guys are globally renowned. Desert Rose is based in South Africa. It was founded in the year 2000 and has been widely regarded as pioneers in the universal sacred world music. Wow. The multicultural duo, Lynn and Yusuf, have to date produced 19 albums and toured internationally to more than 20 countries since 2013, performing at all major events for peace, nonviolence, interfaith and climate change conferences. Their multi-faith and multilingual composition includes, and this, Lynn and Yusuf, blew me off. Oh my God. How many languages? It's Sanskrit, Arabic, Armaniac, um, Hebrew, Hindi, Gurmukhi, French, Spanish, Latin, Josa, and Jew. This is an ancient Bushman language. I've lost count of how many languages you know. You are more than triple linguists, if I may use that word. Amazing. So in 2013, they became part of the United Nations Interfaith Initiative for COP19 in Warsaw in Poland and teamed up with the Brahma Kumaris in, uh, in the COP team to perform in Peru in 2014, in France in 2015, and in Morocco in 2016. Their music has been described as epic and uplifting and allowing the listeners to access their inner world and facilitating the transformation and raising their consciousness. That's the beauty about this globally renowned Desert Rose. So it gives me great privilege to introduce our lovely people, Lynn and Yusuf with Desert Rose. Uh, a big a global namaste to both of you, Lynn and Yusuf. May I be able to see you on the screen, please? And I just wanted to ask you a very quick question. Did you want to give out a message before we play your video? What would you have to share with the audience, the global audience that we have today? Thank you, uh, Dr. Lalit, for that very generous introduction. And... Uh, Namaste, Namaste. To, to the world and everyone out there who are participating in this um, beautiful event. Um, it's a privilege for us to be invited uh, by the Healing Our Earth team and uh, for this online global summit of Healing Minds and Healing Planet. We want to share how sacred music can really play a significant role in uplifting the thoughts and the emotions and therefore influencing a very healthy mind especially in these times and thank you lydia for your inspiring talk uh, that reflected how in innately we're connected to our environment and and music as well uh, is a, a powerful universal language a medium that can help us to quickly connect with our nature uh, our original nature which is one of peace and love and connection so that is the privilege that we we would like to share is our sacred music yes thank you uh, lydia for that inspirational talk um, and taking us back to uh, the importance of our indigenous communities and what they brought and what they taught us uh, ubuntu and uh, the song that we will be doing is um, a depiction of the African indigenous communities, the Khoishan or the Bushmen. So thank you for listening to us and uh, greetings again from South Africa and Africa. I think we are going to be playing a lovely, amazing video from Desert Rose very shortly.
Namaste and greetings from South Africa. We're now going to sing our environmental song for healing our Earth project and the Brahma Kumaris. It is uh, the name of the song is called Sacred World. It's a rain chant, and it is sung in the language of Nu and Nama. We were very fortunate to have been introduced to this Nu language, uh, which only five members of one family in this world is, can still speak, and it was introduced to us by Dr. Nigel Kroho. Um, the indigenous people of Africa were renowned for being able to um, make rain or, or induce rain through the power of chanting and dancing and trance. So we'll be singing this song to, as a healing to our planet. Sidanse Chui Kwatse Avotsa Sida Nahunse Sidanse Nanmo Baba Kawire in Huna Uvire Ida Sida Hati Uvire
Ed Milstead. This was absolutely memorizing. Wouldn't you agree with that audience? This was absolutely so satisfying, if I may say that. Absolutely great. Thank you for having flowers me about coming on board and sharing some lovely music with us. And the, the language you used was the Jew language you said. That was absolutely, I just don't know what to say. I'm at a loss of words right now. Um, the power of chanting and how the Aboriginal people or the native people would induce rain with their singing and dancing and the music that they would play. So peaceful and so soulful and so connecting to the nature it was. Thank you very much for sharing that with us today. Moving on from the South African subcontinent, as much as we love to be there, it's been a great experience with the three speakers that we had lined up all from South Africa. We are actually taking our flight onto back to the Indian subcontinent to introduce a very talented and a very versatile artist, Preeti Bala. Preeti, a global namaste and a warm welcome to you on Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet that has been put up by Healing of Earth. So before we get you on board, let's introduce Preeti to you. Preeti is a trained uh, Hindustani classical musician she is. Her debut pop album was nominated by the MTV Emmys Award for New Talent. She has performed at various different locations over the world and has sung for Hindi, Punjabi, Telugu, Tamil and Malayalam films and given her voice to lots of music there. She has released various albums of different genres. She has had Christmas carols, bhajans, patriotic and Sufi songs and we can actually call her a very talented and a versatile artist. So let us without any delay welcome our absolutely talented, versatile artist for this particular section, Preeti Bala. A global namaste to you, Preeti. Namaste, namaste. So good to see you. And thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I was just listening to Desert Rose and uh, it was really amazing. And uh, uh, yeah, we are here having difficult times, but yes, I'm very sure all this shall pass off very, very soon. So I think I don't want to say much. I would like to say it with my music. And I would like to start off with this song. Uh, it's a beautiful song, which is uh, a dedication to Mother Earth so that Mother Earth can bless us with a disease-free Earth. We can be out of this Corona, out of all the diseases, and there can be peace and calm amongst everyone. So this song is called Teri Mitti, which I would like to sing and dedicate to Mother Earth for all of you. महबूब मेरी मेरी नस नस में तेरा इश्क बहिकाना पड़े कभी रंग तेरा जिस मुँह से निकल जाए खून निकल तेरी मिट्टी में मिल जावा 
गुल बन के मैं खिल जावा इतनी सी है दिल की आरज़ू तेरी नदियों में बह जावा तेरे खेतों में लहरावा इतनी सी है दिल की आरज़ू dedication to our mother earth teri mitti okay i think from this song i would like to change your mood a bit since we are in a global summit right now here and we have the entire world with us and i can see lydia smiling <laughs> and uh, i would like to sing since i sing so many languages and various genres Uh, the song that i would like to sing now is an is an italian folk song which i have mashed up with a hindi bollywood song so the italian folk song is called bella ciao and uh, the hindi song is <laughs> i can see lydia <laughs> and the hindi uh, song is called darling okay it's a bollywood song so uh, you know covid this uh, uh covid also gave us a lot of time because we could get time to watch a lot of television so <laughs> there was this uh, very addictive uh, uh series on netflix called money heist from that's from where i picked up this italian folk song <laughs> which is very beautiful which i would like to sing for you all Una mattina mi sono zatto o bella cha bella cha bella cha 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 una mattina mi sono zatto e ho trovato l'invaso o partigiano portami via o bella cha bella cha bella cha 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 o partigiano portami via che mi sento di morire I love the Bollywood song. Darling, I can see I can't get near you, darling. I can see I can't 
प्यार करने दो रखो है ना रखो है ना कुछ को प्यार करने दो डार्लिंग आखे से आखे चार करने दो मैं क्या है बाहर पीछे जाने यार बुल बुलो को अभी इंतजार करने दो डार्लिंग आखे से आखे चार करने दो Back to the Italian song Una mattina sono alzato Bella ciao, bella ciao, bella ciao, ciao, ciao Una mattina mi sono alzato E ho trovato l'invaso Perché bevo hanno Cinque anni a rovolvolo थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग मी हियर थैंक्स लॉट मिस सुनील कुमार हु गॉट मी हियर एंड या पीस for everyone and i really hope all this passes off soon and we all can see each other and meet each other very very soon yeah so take care of yourself awesome that was so good it was absolutely <laughs> fascinating we were all rocking to that italian hindi combination so i gave it a hinta uh, a new language a combination of hindi and italian hin ita yeah so <laughs> absolutely wow. this english is in hindi and english is called english this yeah. is hinta okay so <laughs> enjoyed it very thank very you. much thank you so, thank you so much yeah, and 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 teri mitte mein mil jawa what a tribute to the mother earth you gave that was so awesome teri mitte mein mil jawa phool ban ke khil jawa teri nadiyon mein beh jawa wow that was absolutely amazing thank you so much priti it was pleasure. absolutely fascinating to hear you and i'm sure everybody has enjoyed globally the two lovely songs that you sang for us now moving forward my hosting time ends over here we are moving on to our beautiful host coming up again is simran ahuja hello simran so just wanted to say a little bit about simran to all the new attendees that are coming on board the new hosts the new lecturers the new music that's coming on simran's an amazing personality she was titled miss india in the year of 2013 and she has made a bollywood movie that's on her name right now zindagi tum se i believe that is releasing shortly i've seen some reviews of certain songs on it this woman is simply amazing the next one to host this program she is an international celebrity anchor associated with prestigious film fair awards like ifa film fair Oscars and many others that she has hosted. She is a recipient also of a very prestigious award, the Dada Phalke Award, that's given to her for her anchor par excellence. She's qualified in masters in finance and she's got a doctorate in natural cure and alternative medicine. She's conducted workshops globally from Zurich to Rome to Paris to Singapore to Sri Lanka. This is one talented beautiful woman we are coming to next. She's the cultural ambassador of the folk dance having won 18 consecutive titles in folk dance both in India and the United States of America. So, Simran on behalf of the Healing Our Earth team Today, healthy mind, healthy planet, and on behalf of all of us, we'd like to welcome you to take on hosting from here on. Simran, a global namaste to you. Global namaste with all my heart and soul. That was extremely kind of you, uh, Lalit, Doctor Lalit, for all your kind words and your reciprocation. And yes, we were all shaking a leg to the tunes of Preeti. Thank you, Preeti, for that. very very unique fusion that you always give us i felt i was watching a live show and i was shaking a leg as well so thank you for your brief introduction and dr lalit as you known to give beautiful words probably they would be added in the dictionary sometimes thank you so much for the great fusion we had and to all our lovely souls we are completely blessed here and we truly truly thank all of you on behalf of healing our earth for being here with us you may please log on to our website 
and definitely take a look at our YouTube page and be live with us. Also, our Facebook page of Healing Our Earth. To all my lovely souls from across the world, healthy mind, healthy planet, a global online summit, which is filled with knowledge, inspiration, music, meditation, and love personified. It is brought to you by Healing Our Earth and Enrich Television in cooperation with Brahma Kumaris. And we feel completely blessed to be here with Sister Jayanti. At first, with humble, absolutely heart and with folded hands, Sister Jayanti, it's absolutely our honor to have you here. And uh, the fact that globally, we are all aware of healing our earth platform and we are all watching you live is truly a blessing. So at first, I'm completely, completely honored to truly welcome you, Sister Jayanti. As the director of Brahma Kumaris for Europe and the Middle East and a spiritual leader and teacher for 50 years, Sister Jayanti has dedicated her life to self-transformation and service to humanity. As a BK representative to the UN in Geneva since 1982, she has championed the cooperative role of spiritual organizations in creating a just and peaceful world. She has brought spiritual principles to the discussion tables of politicians, economists, business leaders, scientists, and nearly every stakeholder of our times. Our lovely Sister Jayanti sees the erosion of spiritual values as the underlying cause of the crisis that the world is facing today. Om Shanti to our lovely Sister Jayanti, and it's an honor to have your darshan here. Om Shanti. Om Shanti and Namaste to Simran, to Neil Kumar Bhai, and to the whole team of Healing Our Earth and everybody else who supported and cooperated to make this happen. It's a real privilege to be with you all and to join in this very, very powerful event that's going to take us many, many steps towards not just healing the planet, but perhaps more importantly, healing ourselves and healing our world family of the human beings. So where do I begin? So many different ideas and thoughts to share. But I'd like to take up the subject of a healthy mind because I understand that it's the health of our own inner being and our own state of mind that's going to restore health to the planet. It's going to be possible to do something in a very powerful, elevated, beautiful way to be able to heal our world family, the human family, but also this planet of ours, if I have a healthy mind. What does it mean to have a healthy mind? I'll share a few thoughts and later we can have a little experiment and meditation to feel what it's really like to have a healthy state of awareness, a healthy mind. I would say that a healthy mind is a mind that's filled with love. A healthy mind is a mind that's filled with truth. A healthy mind is a mind that's filled with compassion. A healthy mind is a mind that's filled with happiness. All these things difficult for us? Why should they be so difficult? In fact, these are the natural state of being of our own soul. And so because we've forgotten ourselves, we've forgotten our relationship with each other, we've forgotten our relationship with the one above, we've forgotten our relationship with nature, and the earth that has sustained us so abundantly, so generously for millennia since the beginning of time, and still continues to do so. Even today, whatever it is we've done to violate and harm and aggress the earth and nature, yet still nature is supporting us. Where do we get our source of food all our life? Our water, we get it from nature. And so I think to honor nature, to respect nature, is part of 
healthy mind also. And so why is it that we should find it so difficult to come back to our own inner state of health? When a child is born, then the child is in touch with itself, is in touch with nature, and in touch with the parents and things that are very beautiful. And then of course, there's a gradual disconnect. And the first disconnect is with the self. I forget that I am responsible for my own state of mind and the health of my own inner world. I think it depends on everybody else. It's as if I've handed over the keys of my own inner world to everything that's out there. Sometimes it's to people, sometimes it's to places, sometimes it's to products, to things, sometimes it's to events. And so who is in charge of my own mind? Am I back in control of my own mind? Or am I still thinking that it's something, someone else out there that controls? Well, today, a message I'd like to share with you is that I am in charge of my own inner world. And if I can take charge of that, yes, my mind will always be healthy and strong and resilient and powerful. And I'll be able to do something for myself, but also I'll be able to do something for my human family. I'll be able to do something for all forms of life, all creation, but also I'll be able to do something for this precious planet. We've forgotten all these things and it's time to remember again who we are and what it is we need to do. There's a very special woman I want to honor and that is Daddy Janki, um, a woman who has given her life and all her love to the whole of humanity and the universe. And she passed away just a couple of months ago. And what she used to say is that I'm responsible for who I am and what I do. And she put it in three very simple phrases, three Om Shantis. Om Shanti, a reminder as to who I am. I am a being of peace. The second Om Shanti, who do I belong to? I belong to the one, the one up above. And thirdly, Om Shanti, a reminder of what it is I need to do today. And so, a healthy mind. Let me take charge of what's going on in my own inner world. And if I can do that, I can be absolutely anywhere in the world, locked down or outside, wherever it is I may be. And what I'll be able to do is to make sure that my mind stays strong and peaceful and loving and truthful. These are my original qualities. I don't need to battle. I don't need to struggle. I don't need to search for these things anywhere outside. I just need to go on that inner journey and feel who I truly am. That's it. It's so easy. It's not difficult at all. I think that's the first step to think that, yes, it is natural. Of course, our life has been highly unnatural and we've been made aware of it by COVID, um, stop, just stop and take a pause and look at yourself and see what you've done to the world and see how you can repair the damage and put right all the aggression. So healthy mind means to remember that I am that inner being. Yes, I have this physical body, very precious, of matter, of earth, it's come from the earth, it will return to the earth. But the mind is eternal, it's free, it is forever alive. And when I come back to this awareness of the inner world, then I say, how can I create peace? Well, I don't need to try. Peace is my natural state of being. And just for a moment, when I go deeper and deeper inside, I can feel that inner state of peace that truly belongs to me. Is happiness difficult? No, absolutely not. Happiness is a choice that I make 
every single moment of the day. I see something, I hear something, I can react to it. Or I can stay peaceful and calm and know that my happiness is within. And nobody and nobody can take that away from me. Is it wrong to be happy when I see suffering in the world? Not at all. Why? Because I'm not laughing at somebody's pain. I'm not laughing at somebody else's suffering in any way. What I'm doing is maintaining my own inner dignity of joy so that then I have the capacity to take away the tears of another. If I'm in sorrow and suffering within, that's definitely not healthy. Neither is it health for the mind, but it's also going to impact my physiology. And of course, of what use can I be? If my mind is unhealthy, my body is unhealthy, what can I do for another? But if I keep my mind stable in inner joy and that happiness, which is an internal experience, not coming from anything or anyone outside, but just simply the joy of being alive, the joy of being a child of the divine, the joy of being a living being, a being that has compassion and light and love, a being that can serve, a being that can give to others. So let me nurture every moment this feeling of happiness within. I am a being of truth. Truth makes the mind powerful. Truth makes the mind dance. Truth is that which is an inner quality which originally belongs to me. And yes, we've been through a period of post-truth. All sorts of things have happened in this period, crazy things that we couldn't have imagined, elections being raped, all sorts of things go on in today's world. But where do I go? What do I need to do? I need to go inside and set my compass straight so that I follow truth in my life. And if I do this, my mind will be strong and fearless. I will be healthy and strong within. And so it's a message of hope. It's a message of good health. Good health for the mind means good health for this physical body. And if mind and body are both strong and healthy, I can have compassion for my human family and actually do something productive, constructive, creative, something that's going to be helpful for everyone. I don't need to sit and wait for somebody to come to me and say, can I help you? But rather, I'll have the possibility and the courage and the fearlessness to reach out and say, hey, I can give you a helping hand. Come, let's walk together. And if we can do that, a healthy mind also means that we work together in cooperation with love and respect. Let's have just a few minutes in which we go on this inner journey and come to this awareness of the inner being, the being that I am, a being of light, a being of love, a being of truth. And in this awareness of my original state of being, I connect with the divine. And the light of love, the light of truth, the light of joy reaches out and touches the whole of the human family and reaches out further and touches all forms of life, the whole of creation, so that they feel safe and secure. It reaches out and touches all aspects of nature, so that nature is restored to a state of harmony and all aggression towards nature ends. A healthy mind means 
I can serve and create transformation so that together we build a better world. Om Shanti. Thank you and Namaste to each and every one. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, sister, I must say that when we closed our eyes and we heard your voice, it actually felt that it's going within absolutely ourselves, trying to touch that inner self of ours. With humble thanks and with folded hands, we truly thank you, sister, for really bringing brightness all across the world. And as you said, yes, it's all about being positive. It's about having healthy mind, absolutely heart full of love, compassion, and kindness. Sister, we have absolutely no words to express our gratitude to you for truly giving that solace and that peace and harmony to all of us. Thank you very, very much to our dear sister. Om Shanti to you. Thank My you. dear lovely friend. My dear lovely friends, our eminent speakers today started from Australia, moving all the way via via, and we will end with the Americas. But for now, it's time for all of us to go to Kuwait. We have our speaker, but there Al Isa, who's an experienced founder and serial entrepreneur with a demonstrated history in the marketing and advertising industry. He's the founder of and host to the biggest entrepreneurial and inspirational platform in the GCC, the Richter Talk Gulf Cooperation Council. He's the founder of the Richter Creative Office one of the top performing creative marketing agencies in the Arab world. Bader has dealt with over 200 clients in the Gulf region, increasing their sales up to 400%. Bader has always been striving to motivate and encourage the future generations of the Arab region by hosting seminars, workshops, and even through social media, helping them to strive for excellence. We like to say shukran to Bader Alisa, a global namaste and greetings to you. Alan, shukran, shukran, shukran. Thank you very much for the beautiful introduction. Um, are we on? All is good? Yes, yes perfect. Okay. Uh, first, I would love to start by thanking you all. Thank you for this amazing uh, summit, Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet, truly. Uh, uh, and accurately described. Uh, thank you. Uh, such an honor uh, to be here today. Uh, special thanks to Al Arfad sisters, uh, Ms. Muna and Ms. Sheikha. Uh, amazing uh, uh, friends and, and family. And uh, thank you for uh, suggesting uh, my name for this beautiful summit. When I first got introduced with a title, um, I said, uh, definitely I am in and I'm honored and happy. And Maybe my take here will be slightly from a different angle, from an entrepreneurial angle, but I would love to say thank you very much, uh, Corona. I would love to thank COVID-19 for all the blessings it gave us. And I believe God is beautiful and everything God decides and faith is beautiful. Uh, it's, it's usually us who decide how to see things. And this is a beautiful story I'd love to start with. Um, I've learned from uh, Dr. David Hawkins in his book, Letting Go. <clears throat> he said, us humans, when you go to a garden and we see two flowers next to each other, we quickly compare between them. Let's imagine that it takes, methylen 10 days for a rose to blossom. And then we see a fully blossomed rose and we see a small rose that is just day one. We quickly compare, say, oh my God, this is a beautiful flower. I know this one needs more time. However, in that particular presence, in that particular moment, both are perfect because this is 
exactly how a flower should look like after 10 days. And this is exactly how a flower should look like in day one. So it's, it's not that it's not perfect and this is uh, uh, more perfect. It's just our perception and how we look at things uh, might seem sometimes uh, judgmental. But uh, a God that created this beautiful universe, that created the sun, the moon, uh, or, or, on all of those uh, uh, beautiful blessings, uh, will not create uh, a, a disease with an intention to harm. Uh, a God is all loving. A disease like this, we, it, it depends on us how we see it and how we take advantage of it. And uh, I've been asking my followers on, on Instagram to tell me yesterday, what they've learned from uh, this uh, such called uh, pandemic. And I've got uh, uh, more than 200 positive comments, zero negative comments. Everyone learned something, everyone benefited, everyone grew uh, uh, in a way or another. And that's uh, such, a, such, a, such a blessing to be, to see this uh, from this world. So um, during, I'm just gonna tell you a couple of, of things we did, just for the sake of, uh, of inspiration. Um, moments like this uh, shook me and my team. Uh, uh, our marketing and uh, our uh, more than 200 clients stopped operating, so we couldn't charge. And I have all those salaries that I have to, to pay. So we decided as a team, since we are a creative agency, what are the creative things we can do during this time? People are sitting at home. Uh, we can create something that will uh, uh, basically get us the revenue so we can pay full salaries and not have to fire anyone and they came up with an amazing idea we decided to do a play so we coordinated with one of the biggest uh, directors here in kuwait and we did a play on Eid. you know we had ramadan uh, last week and then ending of ramadan the celebration we call it Eid. and during Eid, we usually do plays so we did the first virtual play using this amazing platform zoom and we've yeah and he generated all the revenue we wanted and we've helped people become happy why am i telling you this because even during pandemic even during corona it's a, a, a perspective and it's your perception and how you see things that all matters another maybe a, a story or something I, I really believe in that's really helping me through through my uh, my journey is uh, is the flow is the idea of going with the flow so if if i believe uh, uh, that um you know rafting, uh, river rafting, you believe that you are on a raft and the fate is just this beautiful uh, white river that's running very fast. It's not wise to try to swim uh, against the current. All the wisdom is that you go with the current and maybe you use your brain to maneuver between the rocks and, and that's going with the flow. So in times like this, instead of resisting and not accepting and maybe uh, uh, feeling negative, about this pandemic, but uh, I absolutely love it. See that it's all beautiful and it's from God and everything from God is beautiful with total acceptance, with total love. And you'll, be, you'll see the flow. Your intuition will guide you and you will be able to flow like a raft, uh, maneuvering between the rocks, seeing all the beautiful uh, uh, things. So this is basically uh, my take on, on, on what happened and how um, I, I, I believe uh, that such uh, uh, diseases or uh, ideas, uh, it depends on how you use it. You have one brain, so you either keep it busy with worrying or keep it busy with creating and being creative and positive thoughts. So if it's filled with negativity, no way you'll be able to adapt. And who knows how long this pandemic will stay and we cannot stay in home forever. We have to adjust, adapt, yeah, and, uh, 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 cooperate with one another and, and yeah, try to survive this. Uh, so basically, this is um, what I have uh, in mind. Uh, I really yeah, and loved um, uh, Sister Janti take also. Thank you, Sister Janti, for the beautiful vibe and energy you gave us uh, uh, from your talk, uh, for the beautiful uh, inside out. And maybe one last thing I would like to yeah, and sum up with is, um, the following um, from from uh, uh, such amazing book called uh, the surrender experiment for michael Seeger, and from of course Eckhart Tolle and uh, david hawkins i've learned that it's not the thoughts that actually uh, creates all this energy 
it's there is there is an emotional a suppressed uh, negative energy in the body and the thoughts is only uh, a reflection of that energy so uh, while meditating try to or at least that's what i do try to feel the body feel the pain feel the pain body as a cartel uh, name it feel the, the suppressed energy in the in the body and stay with it and by that you release that negative energy and then all this negative thoughts get released as well so i've, I've never tried to maneuver or or try to adjust my thoughts uh, and i believe it's all within the suppressed energy of the body so if you let go of the negative energy uh, automatically your thoughts will become cleaner will become healthier and you will have a healthier mind and uh, as a result you'll have healthier atmosphere and then a, a healthier home healthier uh, town healthier country healthier region healthier healthier world so i mean uh, take care of yourself and uh, be the change you want to see in the world focus on on healing yourself and while healing yourself you'll be healing uh, everyone else and uh, thank you Thank you very much. And namaste, that was absolutely from your heart. And we all look forward to healing the world. The fact that Healing Our Earth has taken this platform, and today it's been extremely special with the cooperation of the Brahma Kumaris. We are truly, truly thankful uh, for this lovely platform, Healing Our Earth, to truly make this a brighter place. Thank you very much, my dear. Of course, Lots thank of you. Thank you, for having you. thank you very much to my dear Bader Al Isa. Thank you for being here with us. And Thanks. now, we'll take you into the musical world of the Desert Rose. Desert Rose, based in South Africa, was founded in 2000 and is widely regarded as the pioneer in the universal sacred world music. The multicultural duo, Lynn and Yusuf, have to date produced 19 albums and toured internationally to more than 20 countries since 2013, performing at yeah, major yeah. events for peace, nonviolence, interfaith, and climate change conferences. Their multi faith and multilingual compositions, including Sanskrit, Arab, Aramaic, Hebrew, Hindi, Gurmukhi, French, Spanish, Latin, and several other languages. In 2013, they became a part of the UN Interfaith Initiative for COP19 in Warsaw and teamed up with the Brahma Kumaris COP team to perform in Peru 2014, France in 2015, and Morocco in 2016. Their music has been described as epic and uplifting, allowing the listener to access their inner world facilitating transformation and raising consciousness. It's time for us to go on a natural high with the Desert Rose. Please watch this. Namaste. Namaste. Global Namaste. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings from South Africa. We're now going to sing a song of mercy, compassion and peace in Arabic um, for healing our earth project and the Brahma Kumaris. The name of the song is called Remembrance and it takes from the Arabic Islamic uh, uh, names of God, the Asma al Husna, and it uses two names, Rahman and Rahim, most merciful and most beneficent.
That was such a divine feeling. The music given us that lovely divine feeling within us. Thank you very much, Desert Rose. And now, may we kindly invite Dr. Nicolas Kostopoulos, who's a qualified at Athens Medical University, Greece, and in the intensive care unit of the Hospital of Chest Diseases in Athens and the respiratory unit of the Manchester Royal Infirmary in England. Dr. Kostopoulos was introduced by Ayurveda, by his Vedya, and he is really renowned in the world of Ayurveda by Vedya Aswin Barot, and in collaboration with him, he practiced privately in Harley Street in London for 10 years, combining Ayurveda and the modern medicine. He established the Holistic Health Center in Athens in 1999. In addition to running his medical practice, 
Dr. Costopoulos is also involved in ongoing research within the field of psychosomatic disease and stress management through Ayurveda. He's a member of the Faculty of Homeopathy in England and of the Hellenic Homeopathic Association in Greece. Regularly participating in international conferences, he's given lectures in the UK, Ireland, Germany, France, Switzerland, Japan, Canada, and India, promoting a modern scientific approach to Ayurveda. May we please, with a global namaste and all our love, invite Dr. Nikolaos Kostopoulos. Namaste, namaste from the sunny Greece. Uh, thank you to the Healing Our Earth for two reasons. One, because really healing our earth means healing our body and healing our mind and for inviting me to give the little knowledge I have uh, in this sense. I'm a physician, so I have two ways to talk. One is, is a talk to a general webinar that I don't see the faces of people who participate. But I, I prefer to talk like I'm talking to close friends. I know I don't see your faces, but listen, we are all humans traveling on the earth and we all want happiness and we all want to be healthy and we all want to know the truth. So uh, my dear friends, although with unknown faces, I know your face will look something like mine with eyes and ears and nose. So let's say we are close friends and I can talk to you more personally. There is no question, mind healthy helps the planet and, and really, if we have a healthy mind, we can't have a healthy planet. So my, my question as a physician is a little different. I will say, what, do we have a healthy mind to start with? And what is a healthy mind? And, and there I can really borrow principles from Ayurveda and modern medicine but I, I will start with something different. I'll start with the brain. You know, to have a healthy mind, you have to have a healthy brain. And brain is an amazing organ. Imagine it's in between these two ears. It has a consistency of tofu or something like this. And you'll be amazed to know that it can contain 200 what we call exabytes. This means 200 million terabytes of memory the second you are talking to me this is this is your brain and it has so many secrets i can only tell you that really your brain sees before your eyes see i can tell you that the brain sees one fifth of a second before your eyes see so it's an amazing organ an amazing organ so it's simple to say, let's have a healthy mind and let's meditate and be quiet. But what is a healthy mind? How do we define it? Usually we define it socially. If our friends like us, if we have a job, if we can have a weekend with our family and friends, then we can say, yes, my mind is healthy. But let me, let me borrow a principle from Ayurveda, we say that the mind has two qualities. One is called Anutvam and the other is called Ekatuvam. The ability, the ability to look in the smallest detail and at the same time not lose touch with the general. And although this looks very, very theoretical, let me, let me put it like this. When you go to a supermarket, do you really believe you are buying a banana? You can say yes, it's, it's very obvious. I'll say no, you can never buy a banana. You can never pay the banana tree for its creativity that it takes sunshine and takes soil and takes water and then it creates a banana. 
you can only pay the rent of the supermarket. You can only pay the clerks of the supermarket, the lorries that transported the banana to you. But banana is priceless. You can never buy a banana. And this is what I call a healthy mind. It is a mind that goes to the supermarket, buys products, and at the same time knows that you cannot buy these products. They don't really belong to you. You cannot pay for these products. Now, do, do you ever consider that a banana as a system has food as well that needs clean water, clean earth, clean air to produce, to reproduce itself? If we start thinking like this, then I can say that our mind is healthy. And when you drink a cup of tea, when you drink a hot cup of tea, do, do you ever feel this unity that the tea came from India, that the sugar came from somewhere on the planet Earth, and the same water that was really watering the tea plantations is in your veins? If we don't feel this appreciation even for a few seconds, to me, it means our mind is not behaving in, in a healthy way. Now, as a physician, I always like not to simply diagnose a problem, because it's obvious to all of us that our mind is, yes, partially healthy, but not totally healthy. And totally healthy means creative, happy, joyful, ready to offer. Because think of something. Think of planet and the human. I can say planet gives and human takes. So if you want to have a healthy relationship, what do we give back? How do we give back? This is the question. So to me, seeing patients all these years, yes, we are healthy as far as our cholesterol is concerned, that we exercise, maybe we meditate, we do yoga, but unless we feel this sense of unity when we deal with details, I say, no, it's not healthy enough. You can still have more happiness, more peace, more creativity. And this is the duty of a physician to diagnose how can I make my patients more healthy? Because never blame yourselves. When I say these things, never feel guilty that, oh, why is my mind not healthy? I'll say it's a brain matter. It's a brain matter. Think that the brain is a very peculiar organ. It's an organ that is hidden in your head. It's an organ that, although it does not really feel the warmth of the sunshine, it does not feel the breeze of the air. Still, it takes all these peculiar electrical signals, like more signals, and creates a reality, which now behind me is very sunny. Before that was cloudy, but have a little more sunshine from Greece. So, how do you deal with this brain? How do you keep the brain healthy? I'll say two things. Two problems that keep our brain not healthy and therefore our mind not healthy are emotional pains, emotional stress and physical pain. Because it's all very good to say that I want to meditate, to be quiet, to be creative. But if I've gone through a lot of stress emotionally, then it's difficult to have this creativity. And if you have a physical pain, if you have an acute backache, or a migraine or a physical problem, how can you be able to have a healthy mind? We all know from our experience, if we go through an illness, our creativity reduces. Our communication is not as good as it should have been. So my duty as a physician is how to restore health in your body, in your brain, and by all means, if you have a healthy brain, then you cannot do anything else but behave in a way that the planet will be healthier. So how do you do this? You know, we have modern medicine and we say if you have a pain, you can take painkillers and if it is too strong, you can take stronger painkillers and all these things. And if you leave modern medicine, no, no, we have Ayurveda. So you can give herbs, you can give ashwagandha and guduchi and uh, we can give Tulsi and so many other herbs. But let me ask you something. 
when Ayurveda developed a few thousand years ago, you know, there were no airplanes. You know that Earth was offering its help to its residents. So really, there was enough asphaganda for people in India if they needed it. But there is not enough asphaganda for the whole planet. Hmm? So remember, it's our responsibility to remain healthy. It is not a question of, I do whatever I want in my daily life. And then, well, let me go to an Ayurvedic physician to take a good herb and then I restore my health. This is a type of greediness against the earth. How much asvaganda can earth produce? How much guduchi can earth produce? And is it fair on of me if I simply sit down in my sofa and watch TV and I don't move and I have a low backache to consume all the guduchi and all the ginger and all the amla of India because my lifestyle is wrong? So my duty as a physician is not simply to give herbs, is to guide my patients to have proper nutrition for themselves, to have proper lifestyle, yoga, meditation, pranayama, appropriate to them. So then their health can be better, but in a more dynamic way, not simply consuming herbs in the same way they were consuming tablets. Although it sounds more holistic to consume herbs and has less side effects, still is me taking from the earth, is not giving in this way. And what I do, just to give you a little sense, uh, with Vaidya Zimbarot, we thought, okay, emotional pain is stress. How can I help my patients to have less stress? And we spread sattva. You know, sattva is the concept of uh, Ayurveda and yoga and Hinduism that we see things as they are. We see as much as possible the reality. And this is not a metaphysical thing. It means I should be aware of what is my strength, my weakness, what is the time I live in, what can I offer? Whoever takes, whatever they take, what can they do with this? And then act. So sattva is the light of reality before you act. It's very, very reasonable. So yoga, meditation, pranayama is what I advise my patients to, to use in an appropriate way, I'll say again, because we use these words nowadays, sometimes in a fashionable way. Not all the asanas of yoga, not all the types of pranayama are appropriate for everybody. You have to choose and see who needs what. Remember, Ayurveda is very personalized medicine. Unless you find the right key, for the right patient, for the right time, eh? you will not help them so much. So one aspect is increase their sattva. And if you increase their sattva, their contact with reality, then by all means, they will have minimum emotional stress. And they will make the right choice. Well, but then you come to 2020. I lived in London for many years. And you have your emails. And you have your SMS and MMS and everything around and your brain becomes hyper excited by all these things. And as it is hyper excitable, you have problems like migraine, for example, that, that is like a disease that becomes like an epidemic. What do you do with these people? Again, my duty and our duty as physicians is not simply to give herbs, because remember, herbs are limited and you cannot consume all the herbs of the earth. For example, for us, we found a method described in ancient years in, in Ayurveda, in Sushruta Samhita, and we call it Agni Karma or thermal microcotyl in modern terms, and we try to use it to relieve migraines, to relieve, relieve chronic pain. So again, if you are a physician and you say healthy mind, healthy planet, you have to find ways to apply it. So healthy mind, healthy planet, of course. This is totally natural. It's like there's no dispute about this. And I think everybody before me, they have uh, loudly and clearly declared this truth. Because think of something. If I want to take from planet Earth, I want to take to be more joyful and more peaceful. Now, if I'm not, I'm not content in myself, eh, then I would like to take more. And if you take more and more and more, probably planet Earth will be exhausted. 
So healthy mind, yes, is very important for healthy planet. But healthy mind means healthy brain. So proper nutrition, proper advice, proper behavior is very important to have a healthy brain so your mind can behave in a healthy way. Because these are no type of mystical expressions. Take a photograph of yourself. Look at a photograph when you were a baby. Look at your smile at that time. Look at your face. What I want you to do is to keep all this open heart, this smile when you were a baby, this happy face, without renouncing all the logic of the adult, the recollection of the adult, the details of the adult. If you put these two things together, I'll say you have a healthy mind. Or in modern medicine, I'll say your right part of the brain that relates with music, with space, and the left part of the brain that relates with logic, with sentences, are joined. And if they are joined, you are healthy. And then nothing else can happen but have a healthy planet. If you feel you don't have all the joy and all the concentration for details, look for help. I, I would urge you to look for help because I think our standards for health have gone down. We believe that if we simply drive our car and we can go on holiday and then we can move around, we are healthy. I would say, no, 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 it's not like this. And we've seen this with COVID-19 we found that really we are not healthy. Planet is not healthy and we are not healthy. And that there is no difference between poor and rich. So I think whatever happens now, if we take it in a type of uh, philosophical and sattva way, then it can help. And again, if you go to any physician anywhere in the world, ask for real health. Ask for your pain to be relieved without too many drugs. Ask for your mind to be balanced without too many drugs. Do you know that whatever drug you take goes to the sea and fish consumes it? You might not believe it, but when salmon travels back to go to the river, if they had a lot of tranquilizers, they, they pick the wrong point of traveling. And salmon is affected by my mental state. So I will say again, congratulations to Healing Earth for really giving the opportunity to so many spirits and people to join together. I will say, uh, please consider yourself healthy is your birthright. If you have an emotional pain or a physical pain, try to relieve it, don't stay with it. And I can say on my behalf, this is what I'm trying to do, using either techniques from ancient Ayurveda, like thermal microcautery to relieve migraines and chronic pain, or techniques from yoga and meditation to relieve your stress. So I hope I have spoken to you like a close friend, although I have not seen your face. And sometimes close friends hear by saying, hold on, our mind is not healthy. Let's try for it and let's look for someone to help us with this. Thank you, Healing Our Earth, for giving me the opportunity. I have to say thank you to Vaidhi Asvin Bharat because he's my teacher in Ayurveda and this is very important in this way. And I wish everybody is well or as they say sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve badrani pasyantu ma kaschit dukha bhag bhavet om santi 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 namaste namaste that was truly beautiful which made us realize how important a healthy mind is to have a healthy planet and it all depends on how healthy the brain is. So focusing on our right brain and left brain, as mentioned, every single thing mentioned by Dr. Nikolos Kostopoulos, I'm going to truly, truly thank you for everything that you've mentioned to us, all the knowledge that you've given us regards having a healthy brain, which will lead to the healthy mind. Thank you so much, Dr. Nikolos, once again. Namaste. Thank you again, and I wish everybody is happy and healthy. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste, and thank you very much. It's my well, pleasure. Namaste. My lovely souls from across the world, thank you for being here with us. Yes, this is streaming live on our Facebook page, Healing Our Earth, YouTube channel, Healing Our Earth, as well as our website. And I'm truly delighted to introduce to all of you 
my very beautiful one of the co-hosts yet again. May we please welcome Renu Gedumal from UK. Renu is a singer, songwriter, composer, guitarist, recording artist, and a producer. Since 1985, this female artist has performed over a thousand international concerts in over 25 countries, including Aruba, Canada, Czech Republic, Gibraltar, Hungary, India, Indonesia, Kenya, Latvia, Panama, Philippines, Poland, Singapore, Spain, St. Martin, <laughs> Thailand, UAE, UA, and USA. She's one of the first female indie label artists in the UK who has done eight solo albums. Absolutely. She sings in a variety of languages and promotes unity and diversity through her music. I'm super delighted to welcome our co-host, Venu Gimbal. And I wish her a global namaste and greetings. A global namaste and thank you so much, dear Simran, for wonderful hosting. I've been enjoying the program for the last few hours. And I must say I'm mesmerized by the wealth of enlightenment from all our participants, whether they are speakers in their chosen field, whether they are musicians, they are all givers for sure. And in the last few hours, I've received so much energy, upliftment, and I think above all, the wisdom and compassion that has come through. So thank you very, very much. Simran, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. Remember everybody, welcome. And if you've just joined us now to Healing Our Earth in connection with the Brahma Kumaris, remember you can see us on www.healingourearth.com, on Facebook, Healing Our Earth, on Twitter, and our handle on Instagram, Healing Our Earth. So despite that wonderful introduction about me, I'm not here to sing, but to share with you a wealth of experience and wisdom from our next few participants and our presenters, our very special guests. We are going to be traveling through Europe now, and I would like to invite our very, very first guest from my hosting point of view, who's come from Germany. This gentleman has got more than 30 years of experience in meditation. He is the advisor on renewable energy to the Brahma Kumaris. And you know, since the early 90s, this gentleman has played a key role in establishing the BKs as one of the major users of renewable energies in India. And not only is he on planet Earth, but he's also developing solar thermal power plants and in fact uh, directed the construction of India One, which is a one megawatt, million watt, MW, I don't even know, you'll have, to, you'll have to enlighten me on that, on the solar thermal plant, which is an innovative research and development project, partly sponsored by both German and Indian governments. Now, this gentleman regularly lectures at the UN climate change conferences, advocates sustainable solutions through an ethical and value-based approach. So all the way from Germany, please give a very warm, loving, healing our earth welcome to Golo Pils. Golo, welcome to Healing Our Earth. Yes, hello, Reno. Thanks very much um, for your warm welcome. And uh, thanks very much to the Brahma Kumaris to organize this event. A healthy mind and healthy planet and indeed uh, our planet is at the moment a bit in trouble um, but it shouldn't be too difficult to get out of it and uh, the plant which I worked in India was a one megawatt means thousand kilowatt just to set that all right and uh, I would like to share a couple of slides with you um, so you get an idea of what we have done in India and I'm sharing screen and share and this and that and I hope it's going to work. And um, well, you see the picture of the coronavirus. And uh, I just actually escaped India 10 days ago with a special evacuation flight. And it was quite uh, some interesting drama to see the effects of the lockdown uh, onto the population, the economic hardship, um, the loss of freedom, and uh, how everybody had to cope. And all our thoughts, they reach out to the people all over the world which suffer 
in the lockdown, uh, suffer traumatas, those who have left us, those who have uh, missing people who cannot travel around, and the doctors, the politicians, which are serving, the nurses, uh, which are helping in the hospitals, so all our thoughts go out to them. And um, uh, we hope uh, that uh, we will all together come out of this crisis and, uh, and uh, that uh, some countries have started to get out of the lockdown and uh, let us see how the situation develops. Um, but uh, having seen about the corona crisis, uh, knowledge about the environmental degradation and the climate change has gone a bit on the back burner. But um, you have to understand, for example, that in India we have now a locust infestion um, uh, in Africa, we had uh, millions and trillions of locusts. They came via uh, Pakistan to India also, and uh, this is directly related to climate change. Climate change is a risk uh, we have since uh, quite a long time. We know that. Um, we have not acted accordingly what's required. And uh, you can see here in this slide the tipping points in climate, and these are the big players which control our climate. The jet streams on top of it have changed. They changed the Indian summer monsoon, the African monsoon, El Nino is changing, the ice is melting, high speed Arctic sea ice, West Arctic ice shelf, and the nature suffers a lot. Uh, the Amazon rainforest is on fire, the boreal forests in the northern hemisphere are burning, and the tropical reefs are disappearing. So nature is in a very, very tight spot. And um, uh, scientists have said that uh, because of our exploitation of the last regions of the planet, also we have caused or indirectly caused also uh, the chance for the virus to mutate and jump over the wild animals towards us. So humans have uh, taken really the planet for a tough ride. And uh, this is a sort of feedback what we see right now. And uh, from a spiritual viewpoint, it's quite interesting because uh, we can see Corona and climate change are a game changer. And um, we can say that this is a karmic feedback loop in a way. It means how we act, we receive after some time. So climate change, coronavirus, these are the actions of the past which coming back to us. And they're both warning signals to humanity and say, hello, something is going really wrong. And uh, Corona has stopped the world, including myself. <coughs> was a big traveler and suddenly I was in lockdown and it stopped the world and makes us reflect and think deeply. And Corona is a clear sign that lifestyle and con economy has to change. Our economic model is not sustainable at all and everybody knows that and just Corona came and we stopped. And uh, let's hope then we come out that we come out in a more green fashion, in a more environmental friendly way and restructure the way how we run our economy. The change that's also quite clear has to be a deep one and has to come from the inside. And we all understand this is the moment of change. This is it. And uh, there is no way this time we can sort of maneuver ourselves easy out. So, but the crisis always has also the potential for some chance. And uh, what is the chance? What can we do? How we can get out of the situation? Well, we have an incredible power of imagination. So what we have to do is we just imagine a good world, a perfect world, because our mind, our inner our inner world, and the outer world are interconnected. And uh, what should we imagine? Let's say peace, love, harmony, perfection, bliss, purity, timeless, and whatnot. A wonderful, perfect world we should keep in our mind. And by visualizing such a kind of world, we change the atmosphere. We change the whole paradigm in us, but we change the atmosphere which we are radiating out. So that's very, very important that we have hope and positive thoughts. How to really bring that transformation is we have to raise awareness and consciousness. That's in schools, of course, with our youngsters. We have to educate them and we have to inform people that, hey, change on the inside and then change will happen on the outside also. We need a drastic change in lifestyle. I think everybody agrees on that. Um, we have to reduce our footprint in a big way. We have to make more use of renewable energy or clean technology, and we have to become a hero. I think something is peeping there. Maybe some microphone has to be unmuted. We have to become a healer and use the power of our thoughts. That's very, very important. So Brahma Komaris is very active. We have an environmental initiative, and. Uh, we are um, going to the United Nations Climate Conference in more than 10 years, 
and we advocate the connection between the inside and the outside and we ask people change on the inside and then change your action on the outside and uh, we advocate the five r's rethink reuse reduce recycle and refuse refuse to buy everything rethink before you buy reduce goods reduce your consumption and recycle i think these are easy things and everybody can follow and interestingly corona has forced us already to adopt some of these changes just automatically and um Brahma Kumaris is also practically very active. As you mentioned, we have started 25 years ago with renewable energies. We did photovoltaic systems, a lot of research, and we are a recognized research center. And uh, we do in various areas research. And uh, here are some of our systems we build. This is a steam cooking system we built in Abu Road in 1999. It cooks uh, 35,000 meals every day. It's the biggest solar cooker in operation, I think, right now. And um, it's now almost, uh, it's 20 years old and 21 years old and it runs perfectly as on today. We have installed also photovoltaic systems. We have 5,000 meditation centers in India and uh, more than 600 are running on photovoltaic. And here you see a 50 kilowatt installation. And uh, our recent project was India One. That's a one megawatt, means thousand kilowatt solar thermal power station with storage. Um, a bit technical. The crucial point in transition to clean energy is storage. We have to store the energy overnight and this power plant can do that. It was a 12 million euro project and we got financial, substantial financial funding from the German government and from the Indian government. Thanks a lot to them. And the plant runs then two years very, very nicely. I just was visiting two weeks ago and there's a team of 30 brothers and sisters from Brahma Kumaris maintaining the plant and keeps it operational. And you can see here a picture from the top uh, 770 dishes, they follow the sun, they produce steam and the steam goes into a turbine. On the right side, you can see also a one megawatt photovoltaic. So we use solar thermal, we use photovoltaic and we trained more than uh, thousands of engineers. We had more than 50 workshops there with seminars and workshops with engineers and we have 100,000 visitors who come and see this technology and we try to replicate it and roll it out into the country. We work also closely with institutes, research organizations and universities. And as I said, at the UN conferences, we're spreading uh, the information about the technology and what can be done. But now coming to the last point, most important, how to heal yourself and how to heal the world. And I would like to give a short memento to our daddy junkie. She was the head of institution. She left us about three months ago, two months ago, and I was there in India. It was a very special moment. And she was my teacher and guide for more than 37 years. And many times she supported also our solar initiatives. She helped with money. She helped when we had technical problems or this and that. And she was a wise woman full of wisdom and a real powerful yogi. And she has taught me about the power of meditation. And I would like to share with you some scientific finding. If you meditate, uh, you're able to increase your social competence and emotional intelligence. It deepens your relaxation, improves your creativity, but it helps you to increase your brain cells activity and makes you able to change your neuronal pathways in your brain. It means you're able to change habits and awareness. And this is what we all have to do. We have to answer to this current crisis and that's how we, ha we have to change our habits and our awareness. Meditation is a very, very powerful tool. And what you think matters. Because science also tells us the inner world, how I feel, my emotions and the outer world are connected. Quantum physics says, if I observe the experiment, I influence the outcome of the experiment. And there have been thousands of um, experiments in the last 30, 40 years conducted by universities. They're all peer reviewed, which clearly state our mind, our mental state is connected to the physical reality. Inner world and outer world are connected and interlocked. This is very, very important. And Meditation and a change of thoughts is cooling our mind and will enable us to create a new reality and a better world. And coming to the end, I would like to speak for two minutes, uh, meditation, a commentary, a little journey, uh, so you can all join and uh, please follow and um, sit relaxed and um, take a deep breath and concentrate in your forehead. I am a being of light. I am a being of peace and love. 
I am connecting to the divine. In this connection, I can feel love and peace coming to me and empowering myself. I become peace and light. I'm now focusing to the world around me, to the planet, the to all the people who are suffering in Corona crisis, who have fear of losing their jobs, who have not enough to eat, who are living under cruel conditions, to nature which is suffering under our actions, and to the animals. I give them all my healing touch, my love, God's peace. I now take my, I now take the world in my hand and see the, all the souls being there and I give light to the world and peace to the world and I change the world in front of my eyes into a planet of peace, happiness, beauty and purity. This is the new world we all want to go. This is the new world we all want to achieve. My power of thoughts and the connection to the divine helps me to achieve that. This is the path I have to follow, the path of the divine light. So thank you very much for staying with me for the meditation and I hope the short um, informations which I shared with you have given some information uh, that climate change is going on and uh, this crisis is a call to all of us to change our lifestyle, to change very deeply on the inside and connect to the divine. And I hope in the meditation you experienced a little glimpse of that and this gives strength and builds up inner resilience which we all need to overcome and become healthy and stay happy. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you so much, Golo. What a wonderful, succinct presentation. You took us from the problem to the solution. You talked about climatic tipping points, the jet stream and, and El Nino, all of the imbalance in the earth. You talked about the karmic feedback loop, how our action has a definite sadly negative reaction in our lives. And then you showed us the wonderful work that the Brahma Kumaris are doing, actually with sustainable energy, with solar energy, solar power, using the sun, which is what sustains the entire earth, the whole ecosystem. And how we need to change our economic model. So true, because it doesn't work at the moment. Our banks and Wall Streets, etc. nothing nothing and then you brought us to the solution which is that inner deep change which is required using our imagination to project a beautiful world where we have harmony and love and compassion things that are just and you took us on this inner journey of meditation what a beautiful gift you've given us Golo thank you so much we wish you and the Brahma Kumaris further, further renewed success and fulfillment because as you grow and develop, you are helping all of us. So thank you once again, all the way from Germany, dear Golo. Om thank Shanti. You. All the best, Om Shanti. And namaste. namaste. Thank you. And dear friends, I would like to invite another, our next guest. So we move from Germany to Denmark. And we're going to meet a beautiful lady. Her name is Sonia, Sonia Olsen. She is the director of the Brahma Kumaris in Denmark. And she has practiced Raj Yoga meditation since 1986. And she works in a very interesting sphere. One of her focuses is she's a meditation teacher with the prison service in Copenhagen. And in 2009, she was instrumental in developing the Brahma Kumaris Environment Initiative in order to meet the need for a higher environmental awareness within the international PK community and to add this inner dimension to the discussions at the United Nations 
Climate Change and Biodiversity Conferences. So it's a great pleasure and privilege to introduce you and welcome you to Healing Our Earth, dear Sonia. Namaste. Namaste. And thank you, Renu, for the introduction. And what a privilege to be invited by the Healing Our Earth team and the Global Online Summit, Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. And very inspiring speakers today. What a wonderful day. Our program today is dedicated to the UN World Environment Day on the 5th of June. The theme this year for the World Environment Day is Time with Nature. And this topic is very important in these times we are witnessing and experiencing right now. Here, in summer like Denmark, we are now opening up our society more and more after the lockdown. And a national survey was made with some journalists and they asked 10,000 Danes what they would like to change coming out of this crisis. And top of the list, was the realization that people are important. People are at the center of our lives. It means many people have suffered from loneliness and isolation actually in this part of the world more than anything else. Second on the list was the realization that in the future, the pace of life needs to be slower, more peaceful, being more present in the moment. And third on the list was that nature is calling. I and mean, when we have a lot of nature in this part of the world with sparsely populated countries, but uh, the nature is calling. And why is that? I suppose when we're in nature, we are inspired by balance and we see the beauty. And when we come close to nature, we also start reflecting. Once in a climate change conference, I was approached by a journalist and he was dressed like Mother Earth. He had a big round globe around him and his, micro, his microphone was like, a speed, it was like a carrot. And he asked all the people, he says, I'm Mother Earth, what would you like to say to me? And I was thinking for a while, oh, what would I like to say to Mother Earth? But I realized I would say, we like to come close to you because when we come close to nature we come close to ourselves and i think that's what we're all longing for in a sense to come really close to ourselves in this increasingly polarized world positive values play a more and more important role the positive values stay, helps me to stay enthusiastic change maker and to do something about situations. And in our Brahma Kumaris Environment Initiative, we have identified 10 positive values which connect the inner world and the outer world. And the stronger I become in these values on the inner side, the more stronger, important role that we play on the outside. So I'd like to share them with you. And top on the list, um, not surprisingly, it would be a simplicity, living simply. Living with less things means less complications. When I'm supported from inner contentment, then a simple lifestyle is a beautiful, easy lifestyle. Then it doesn't feel it's forced upon me. I don't have to let go of so many things because it comes from the inside. The other one is being positive. I have to stay positive in order to have the energy to keep moving on and to care. When I'm negative, you know, I don't care about sorting waste or saving water. I don't care about other people sometimes. Third, being unlimited. To think of my own survival has passed. Now we have to open our consciousness and think for the common good. No single being, no single nation, no single religion can reverse the present trends on their own. Open your heart. As I open my heart, my love and compassion flows. And the more I love and compassion I feel, 
the more responsibility I will naturally take. I take responsibility for things I care about. And when I care, I share. Respect life. We have an old spiritual principle called all life is sacred. So with divinity and with respect in my attitude, I make sure I give more than I take. And then we have walk your talk to practice what I speak, what I speak. And nobody of us can practice it 100%, but I can be open with the things I, it, which is difficult for me. So I can keep my credibility and we can learn together. Empower yourself. We all learned that when external support crumble, it's good to know that I'm a soul of light and peace and that I have an eternal connection to the Supreme. And eat well, vegetarian or even vegan food would be the biggest single step an individual can take to reduce the carbon footprint. And follow your dreams. We all have a dream. And in that dream, nobody is sitting alone on a dirty planet. We are all on a beautiful planet together with people we love in our dreams. So the more stronger I keep that dream and vision, the, the more energy I will have to make it happen. And the last on the list on the value, she is feed the soul, meaning time for silent reflection, meditation will give me the strength, give me, find, help me find the deeper values so I can practice all of these things. So that's the 10 positive values that Brahma Kumaras have identified to connect the inner with the outer world and to help us to become enthusiastic change makers. And I like to share a meditation with you. And this will be a visual meditation. It's a green angel meditation called the Tree of Life and it's dedicated to World Environment Day. And I will put on a video for all of you and this will last a few minutes. So please stay with these beautiful nature pictures. Could you increase the sound, please? Settling into meditation, I reflect upon humanity and all living beings as being a, a big green tree. I see the vitality and the life force in this tree of life. I send my thoughts deep into the roots of the tree. Connect to the seed of the tree and I let my thoughts become as still as a seed. I stay here with my mind for a while, enjoying the quietness. As the seed of my thoughts starts to grow, I feel the responsibility of supporting the tree of life. I 
I decide to remain a supporter of this new growing tree of life. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little journey to nature. And that was I beautiful. Say, yes, I take this thank you now for all of you listening to me. And uh, I will hand over to the host again. Om thank Shanti. you. Om Shanti and thank you so very much, Sonia. That was beautiful and what a wonderful video to end with as well. And to recap, I loved some of the things that you brought up which is also something that Golo said, that people are important. And what do people need? We need connection. We get unhappy, we get depressed, we get lonely. But when we're connected, then we find solace, we find some strength and will to live. This pace of life that is so frenetic at the moment, the current situation has forced us to slow down it's forced us to slow down, to go within. And when we go out, we go and we enjoy nature, which is our greatest teacher. It teaches us balance. So thank you very much. And those 10 positive values, Sonia, were very, very good. I noted down some of them, the simplicity, the positivity, all of those, the self-responsibility, being unlimited and being more generous in sharing. These are all really valuable life lessons that you have shared with us. Thank you so very much. And we wish you every continued success and growth in your journey in life. Thank you once again. Well, dear friends, I can't say anything that I'm, but that I'm overwhelmed really with the beauty, the wisdom that's coming through in our sessions. And they're very serious as well. We're getting an idea really of how important it is to serve our planet well. Well, our next guest follows this theme of wisdom and of respecting the earth. Please let me introduce to you a wonderful guest. She's all the way from Costa Rica. Her name is Cristiana Figueres. Cristiana, welcome to us. Cristiana is a Costa Rican citizen and she's an internationally recognized leader on climate change. She was executive secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on climate change from 2010 to 2016. And during her tenure at the UNFCCC, Ms. Figueres brought together national and subnational governments, corporations and activists, financial institu institutions and NGOs to jointly deliver the historic Paris Agreement on climate change in which 195 sovereign nations agreed on a collaborative path forward to limit future global warming to well below two degrees centigrade and to strive for 1.5 degrees centigrade in order to protect the most vulnerable. I remember following this and it was tortuous. So I can imagine just how incredibly difficult it was to get that incredible achievement. And Ms. Figueres for this achievement has been credited with forging a new brand of collaborative diplomacy and has received multiple awards. So since then, she has continued to accelerate the global response to climate change. And today, uh, Christina is the co-founder of Global Optimism, it's the co-host of the podcast, Outrage and Optimism, lovely title, and is the co-author of the recently published book, The Future We Choose, Surviving the Climate Crisis. Sitting on multiple executive and advisory boards, she's a frequent public speaker and media commentator. And even though you're from Costa Rica, it's nice to see that you're a graduate of Swarthmore College and the LSE, the London School of Economics. You live in Costa Rica, and I believe you have two fantastic daughters. So a very, very, very warm welcome, Christiana. Looking forward to hearing your wonderful message. It's an honor and a privilege to have you with us today on Healing Our Earth. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you very much, Randy. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. Um, I just would like to make one little correction to the sure. introduction. I actually didn't think it was strenuous uh, to 
help the world come to the Paris Agreement, I actually thought it was a blessing and a sacred opportunity to support uh, the world in doing what we actually had to do. There was no doubt about that. Um, and I should immediately um, thank the Brahma Kumaris for their support during that whole time. I see Sonia, who I'm just following, my, uh, my sister and friend Sonia and uh, Sister Jayanti, both of whom were with me, literally with me in my office so often and uh, supporting uh, a, a difficult but a uh, quite promising and eventually a successful process. Um, a little bit difficult to follow Golo and Sonia and uh, all of the other speakers today because I think um, we're in danger here of having very deep agreement with each other. And, uh, and I fear also agreement uh, or I'm delighted to know agreement with everyone else who is online um, about so many, about so many truths and, and beautiful wisdom that has been shared. Um, I often think that this crisis of coronavirus that has uh, been wrought upon us is, uh, as Golo said, a reminder, a, um, a, <laughs> a, 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 a very strong bell that is being run. But if you think about the coincidence or the collision of so many crises that we're under at the same time. We're under the health crisis and some countries are coming out of that crisis, but many are still entering. So we're still in the midst of the health crisis. We're then moving into a second wave, which is the economic crisis of the economic consequences of especially the millions of people who have lost their livelihoods that overlaps the inequality crisis that we had even before the coronavirus. It accentuates that inequality crisis. And on top of all of that, we still have on the horizon, the climate crisis. So we certainly didn't ask for all of these crises to collide upon each other, but it does seem that each one of them hasn't been loud enough for us to change the way we think and the way we act in the world. And so maybe this really is the deep call for us to rethink and to change the way that we are acting, finally. The coronavirus experience that we have all been having has been, I think, um, painful, certainly for the families of the thousands of people whose lives we have lost, certainly incredibly painful for the millions of families who have lost their livelihoods and will continue to lose their livelihoods until we can do the economic recovery. But it has also been already very rich in lessons that I hope we will not forget because the literature is full of studies that show that during a disaster, during an emergency, we humans tend to become much wiser than we were before. And then as soon as the disaster is over and we return to normal conditions, somehow we have a lobotomy and we forget that wisdom and we go back to previous, uh, to previous lack of wisdom and previous uh, ways of doing things. So I'm hoping that this time we're not going to subject ourselves to this lobotomy. But um, I, I've actually been making uh, lists and lists and lists of lessons learned from coronavirus. Today, I'm going to share five um, that I think fit very nicely into the conversation that we have been having here. The first is that there is a very important role for science when it comes to any global threat, whether that's 
a health threat, a climate threat, a biodiversity threat, any kind of global threat, there is a very important role for natural science. And that, that role of science, which we must heed, is not in contraposition to, but rather complementary with spiritual understanding. And Golo said that, my friend Sonia said that, other speakers have come to that. These two things, what, who we are on the inside and what we do on the outside are totally interlinked. And we have to understand that natural science is the external expression of our internal spiritual wisdom. And, and, and that's where natural science comes from. We, we tend to think that we get natural science from the outside. Well, the outside has been there for 4.5 billion years. We are the newly arrived and it is our opening that to um, understand that outside that actually gives us the um the science and the guidance for how to deal so those two natural signs that we must heed but our spiritual path that we must cultivate and follow um for me are so interlinked especially now during this coronavirus that would be my first I'm not sure if it's a lesson because I think we knew that this is just a re-lesson of re relearning. The the second um, re-lesson also because we knew it before but we're being reminded is um, that in front of any global challenge there is always a very important role for systemic or top-down or government slash corporate measures and decisions, but that it is equally important to have individual responsibility and that we cannot deal with any global threat, whether it is health, economics, or climate. We can't deal, oh, and certainly inequality. We can't deal with any of those threats unless we see that the top down and the bottom up, that the systemic and the individual are actually part and parcel of each other and certainly of the response that is necessary for um for answering these challenges and just on coronavirus you know the very obvious example is we were told by the health authorities to go home and close the door and if half the world's population had not done so we would be in a much much worse condition than we are now so each of us contributed to the emergence from that health crisis. None of us individually can be told you were the one that helped us get out of this, but all of us collectively as individuals, but collectively have actually contributed to that solution. And that is as true for the coronavirus, for the economic crisis, for the inequality crisis, and for the climate crisis. The third um, that I would like to point out is that although we were told that physical distancing is important, what we have all learned as we have closed the doors of our home is that immediately the next step is to open the doors of our heart. And that physical distancing is quite different from heart distancing. And that the worst thing that we can do is physically distance ourselves and heart distance ourselves. In fact, it is precisely in the moment of obligated physical distancing that we have to remember the importance of heart distancing, to, uh, of, not, of not doing heart distancing, but rather of heart approaching to ourselves and to each other because it is that connection that keeps us grounded that keeps us motivated that keeps us alive and that contributes to that solution and i'm sure all of you have noticed how we have all reached out much more during the last two months to friends and family that we love and we don't ignore but we don't usually connect with them as often as we've had we have in the last two months 
um, that is a very important lesson, again, that I hope that we're not going to forget once we can open the doors of our homes. The fourth is um, that in front of these huge crises, all four of them, uh, it is very tempting to feel helpless as an individual or as one person or as one family because the challenge is so much bigger than just us. But the big lesson, or again, re-lesson, because we knew, but we're being reminded, the big lesson here is that in the face of this perceived helplessness, we feel empowered in as much as we actively go into supporting ourselves and supporting others. It is when we take responsibility for our own feelings, our own thoughts, our own actions, and put all of those in service of others, that is when helplessness just goes out the window and we can feel that we are actively contributing and that we are full of that very beautiful divine power that is ours to express. And the fifth, uh, is, uh, again, the re-lesson that each of us is only as safe as the most vulnerable among us. That is so true of the coronavirus. We will, none of us will be safe of this virus until every single person on this planet is actually immunized against this disease. And I'm very glad that we have had this physical evidence for that lesson because it's a little bit more difficult to understand the same truth with respect to inequality or the same truth with respect to climate change, but they are the same truths. None of us can sit back. None of us can feel safe in any way until the most vulnerable person has been guaranteed their dignity and their well-being on this planet. And so I'm just so grateful for relearning re re-lessons uh, that have been um, given to us. And, and I just wanted to, um, to conclude picking up from Golo's beautiful um, meditation uh, where you invite all of us to imagine our future. Um, I, I firmly believe that that is so, that we can create a much better future. Um, and I certainly have experienced that we need to imagine what we want to see out there in the world. And then we need to go out there and act in that direction and with that responsibility in order to make our imagination a reality. Otherwise, we leave it up to others to create what um, perhaps they might want to do. And we know that uh, sadly, there is much thinking and much acting that is going in the direction of a world that is not a word, world of solidarity. And hence, it is our responsibility to act, to imagine and to act, and thereby to choose the future that we want for ourselves and certainly for those who will come after us. So I come down on the side of yes, imagining and acting, because otherwise we leave the space a little bit too empty. There is a little dangerous vacuum there that will be very quickly filled up by others. So with that, um, thank, thank you for you. And uh, thank you for everything that has been so inspiring today. Thank you so much, Christina, from Healing Our Earth. My goodness me, really. We're really privileged to have you, to have Sonia, to have Golu with us today, highlighting very, very serious problems, but coming up with ex extremely practical as well as the scientific solutions. And, you know, you talked about the human inequality and the extant crises, but 
isn't it interesting how, hu how nature has just raised the decibel volume to such a degree that we cannot ignore and ignore we will, we will perish at our peril. We will, we will perish, yes. So thank you very much again. You are doing extraordinary work in the world. You're an important voice in the global community. And we're very grateful, truly, to have you with us today. A very warm, very sincere thank you, Christiana. Thank you so much. And um, Golo and Sonia, thanks to you also. Uh, a little bird tells me, um, Sonia, uh, my producer director informs me that you had Rosemary from London together with all the other regional heads of the BKs. You've worked very, very hard for Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. And for this, we are most grateful. And a special thanks also to Sister Jayanti for inspiring all. Baba, bless you. And I bet Dadi Janki, that supreme angel, is shining down on all of us. So a very warm, loving Om Shanti to each one of you. Thank you very much for bringing the depth of um, seriousness that was required um, about our Earth's condition. And bringing the solutions, that's the most important thing, having problems there are, but having creative, practical, and spiritual solutions that are available to everybody. Opening the heart, opening the heart. And this is where the gesture of namaste also is so good. When our palms are apart, there is so much distance and scope for negativity, for misunderstanding. But as we come together in our hearts and applying natural sciences in a meaningful and productive way, there is no distance. There is only connection. Om Shanti. Thank you. I'd like to mention Rosemary Tuberwill in London, one of our sisters there. She's been doing amazing work and putting all this together. And I enjoyed working with you, Rosemary, very much. Wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you. Well, we have a complete different change of uh, genre now. So relax and enjoy. We've got two wonderful participants now, two wonderful guests from the UK. Please uh, welcome, get ready to welcome and enjoy the musical sounds of Lucinda and Marcus. Let me introduce them first. Lucinda Drayton, she's a very successful singer-songwriter, written a number of hit songs and sold hundreds of thousands of albums worthwhile worldwide, both with the band Bliss and under her own name. And she's very well known for co-writing and performing a beautiful spiritual classic called A Hundred Thousand Angels. Please Google that and have a listen. She performs live all over the world, playing both stadiums as well as intimate venues. Now, Lucinda's been teaching meditation, and she's been studying the dynamics of the self for 30 years. She's BACP accredited, and that's an integrated, integrative counselor, and has a private practice in South London. Lucinda uses a particular approach, the REACH approach, to equip her clients with the tools, practice, and knowledge needed for sustainable change. She's passionate about empowering individuals and walking the talk, most mm -hmm. important. And Marcus, Marcus Cliff, Marcus studied music at Leeds College um, and since the um, 1980s has been working very consistently at a high level in the music industry. Now, the names I'm going to mention now that he's worked with are just, you know, global names, artists as diverse as Mark Knopfler, Paul Young, Al Green, Emma Bunton, Rod Stewart. Marcus has provided the groove and the style to them as a top-level bass player. And if you've seen any of his videos, Marcus, I googled you. I enjoyed myself thoroughly listening to you and your recent riff that you put on YouTube two weeks ago. He played piano with Tasmin Archer on a solo tour. And in 2018, he graced the piece in the Park Concert Stage as a solo performer, as well as playing guitar singing. Now, you might have heard of the group Manfred Mann. Yes, so well, the Manfred Manns have evolved to the Manfreds. And you can see Marcus every year on their UK tour, where he regularly plays guitar and piano, as well with Lucinda Drayton. As being a successful producer, Marcus was awarded the Sunday Times Record of the Year for his work as part of the duo Miracle Mile. And he's currently working with the newcomer, Tony Hill. So 
suffice to say that we're in the presence of legends. Lucinda, it's a great joy. I'm so delighted to welcome you with a loving namaste to Healing Our Earth and looking forward to hearing your dulcet tones and Marcus's beautiful music as well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you, Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet, for inviting me. I really enjoyed hearing Sonia and Golo and Christiana and also the Ayurvedic doctor who was talking before. I'm in total agreement, of course, the inner outer world. And I suppose my role as um, a musician uh, in this particular song that we're going to play today is, is really about that heart connection because love, peace and wisdom for me is a song of the heart. Um, it, I didn't write this song, it, it, it arrived. I mm -hmm. sat down, I heard the melody, it's an old traditional Irish melody. And I was thinking about a program we were doing of the same name called Love, Peace and Wisdom. I sat down and the words just came. And so I knew it was going to be very powerful the minute I wrote it down because because it, I was given it. So love, peace and wisdom has the wonderful words. We long to return to that place of still water, to sit under a shady tree, the tree maybe that Sonia was talking about. So yes, to return to an earth that we look after, an earth that we respect when we've learned to come back to respecting and loving ourselves. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, you'll see Marcus in the video. We made a video because we're a little bit obsessive about sound. We know Zoom doesn't cope well with sound. So we wanted to do that um, so you would hear it in its fullness. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much, Renu. Thank you, everybody. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs>
We long to Simply beautiful, Lucinda and Marcus. Thank you. That was really magical. Your voice has a very pure quality and every word was so clear. The meaning was so clear and heartfelt. We thank you and Marcus and we look forward to welcoming you back to Healing Our Earth, uh, our Global Online Summit again in the future. Thank you once again. Well, dear friends, I've so honored to have been hosting this hour. I'd like to introduce our last, well, my last, my last participants, my last presenters on a very high and jolly note. I heard them a couple of weeks ago, and I must say, girls, blown away by you. So these are two sisters here. I shall give them a wave. Hello, Andrea and Sarah, all the way from the US of A. Yes, And we're going to be having, um, they're going to be actually singing a live healing recital and performance from their latest album. Now, the great guru, Deepak Chopra, said of Andrea and Sarah's unbelievable journey that it was an inspiring odyssey of finding the divine in everyday life. Now, today Shanti Shanti, that's their name, are the only Sanskrit all-female rock band in America. Amazing. What a great group. Raised in Nevada, USA, uh, Andrea and Sarah discovered in their childhood, well, this is extraordinary, they discovered in their childhood that they could spontaneously read and recite Sanskrit, the world's oldest language, without any prior training. Well, extraordinary indeed. With their angelic voices and piercing Sanskrit pronunciation, they combine traditional Sanskrit recitation with popular lyrics, which gives them a unique sound unlike any other in the world today. And they have over nine albums to their name. So without further ado, looking forward to hearing you two angels Namaste. sing. Namaste. Namaste. Welcome to Healing Our Earth once again. Thank you for having Hi, us. Yes. Yes. We're very happy to be here. Um, what we were thinking about doing is just doing two Sans Sanskrit pieces from the Vedas, since you already have people doing music and beautiful songs, beautiful music. Um, we, I, we thought our contribution could be uh, chanting from the Vedas, since so much of the Ayurvedic principles and so many of the, the foundation of what you're talking about comes from the Vedas. So the first thing piece we're going to do um, is as out of an Upanishad, and it says, the creator presents the utmost, and then the summary of this to grasp, truth and knowledge of creation, the knowledge stands with pleasure as the supreme understanding of the elements space air fire water and the earth and the moon and these are with us and they are within the self and they are an aspect of the self residing in time and in the directions of north and south for the supreme self the atman this is the shloka so we'll chant that first it's very short um that's out of the um out of the vedas and i think talking about the elements is super important because so much ayurveda ayurveda goes back to the study of the elements as they are in the body and as they are in our environment. Nature. Yeah. So. Oh, Brahma Vida Apnoti Param Tadesha Bhukta Satyam Yana Manantam Brahma Yoga Dani Tam Gohayam Parame Vyoman So Oshnute Saravan Kama Ansa. Brahmana vipashiteti, 
tasma dva e tasma dadmana akasha samputaha akasha dvayu vayoragni agnera paha andyaha prativi prativya oshadhaya oshadhivyo nam anna purushaha sava esha purusha nara samaya tasyena me vashiraha I am Dakshinaha Paksha, I am Muttaraha Paksha, I am Atma, Idam Pucham Patishtaha, Tarap Yesha Shloka Mati. So the next piece we want to share with you is one that you can chant with us. It's actually out of the Vedas as well. And I love this piece. It's called the, flower, the Mantra Pushpam, the Flower Mantra. And um, it's perfect for those of us who are starting our gardens and getting ready for summer. And basically, and just the fertility of life, the fertility of life, the, the production, abundance, the, the abundance of life. And, um, and it, it goes to the different elements. It says, may we be endowed with this element and I'll name air or, uh, or fire or uh, the moon or the constellations and say, may we be endowed with this and with all the knowledge that it contains and all of those properties. So it's asking for a blessing from all of those different properties mm -hmm. in the universe. But the line, that you'll hear repeated over and over is I Yatanavan Bhavati. I Yatanavan Bhavati. And that's where you, everyone can actually chant with us um, just because it's, this is a good time to put some really good vibes out, vibes in, the world. out in the world. And this is a wonderful piece. So um, I Yatanavan Bhavati. That means, yes, bring those elements. Give, please endow me with that knowledge and those properties. And okay. we do actually have to read it because it's a little long. It's a little long, and but we are reading it in the Devanagari. I don't know if that makes any difference, but it is the Devanagari. <laughs> we're That's <not> wonderful. <laughs> we're all going to be we're going to be muted. We'll be chanting with you, but yep. we'll be muted so we can hear you and not disturb it. Oh, oh thank okay. you. <laughs> yes, because we do get distracted. We do really. <laughs> we do. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yo pam push pam veda push pavan prajava an pashuman pavati chandramava a pam push pam push pavan prajava an pashuman pavati ya evam veda yo pam ayatanam veda ayatanavan pavati agnirva a pam ayatanam ayatanavan pavati yo agnira ayatanam veda Ayatanavan Bhavati Akova Agnera Yatanam Ayatanavan Bhavati Ya Evam Veda Yopam Ayatanam Veda Ayatanavan Bhavati Vayorva Apam Ayatanam Ayatanavan Bhavati Yo Vayora Yatanam Veda Ayatanavan Bhavati Apo vai vayo rayatanam, ayatanavan pavati, ya evam veda yo pama yatanam veda, ayatanavan pavati, a sau vai tapana pama yatanam, ayatanavan pavati, yo masha tapata ayatanam veda, ayatanavan pavati. Apova Amusha Tapata Ayatanam Ayatanavan Pavati Ya Evam Veda Yopa Mayatanam Veda Ayatanavan Pavati Chandra Mava Apa Mayatanam Ayatanavan Pavati Yas Chandra Masa Ayatanam Veda Ayatanavan Pavati Apo vai chandra masa ayatanam ayatanavan bhavati ya evam veda yo pam ayatanam veda ayatanavan bhavati nakshatrani va apam ayatanam ayatanavan bhavati yo nakshatrana ayatanam veda ayatanavan bhavati Apo vai nakshatrana mayatanam ayatanavan bhavati ya evam veda yo pa mayatanam veda ayatanavan bhavati parjan yo va apa mayatanam ayatanavan bhavati 
ya parajan yasya yatanam vedan ayatnavan bhavati aho vai parajan yasya yatanam ayatnavan bhavati ya evam veda yo bhama yatanam veda ayatnavan bhavati sanvatsaro va apama yatanam ayatnavan bhavati ya sanvatsaras ya yatanam veda ayatnavan bhavati apo vai sanvatsaras ya yatanam ayatnavan bhavati Yevam Veda, yo oksuna vam patishitam Veda, pratyeva tishati. Wonderful. Om Shanti, 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 Hari Om. Beautiful to have the Yoga Hari Mantra, the Pushpa Mantra. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much and look forward to seeing you here again. Well, dear Thank friends, you. what an incredible hour we've had of wisdom, of knowledge, of music, of joy, of compassion and sharing. I would like to say thank you very much to Healing Our Earth in connection with the Brahma Kumaris today who have so kindly been supporting us. And I would like to say bye-bye to you all. See you again next time and love to introduce now my next my dear colleague and your next host so this is a warm welcome to dear sarita menon sarita is the managing director of indus a printing company based in elstree london and prior to that she ran a training business which followed a career in the travel sector the sarita is an nlp master practitioner starting her spiritual journey several years ago when she joined the Art of Living Foundation. She's also an Art of Living teacher, conducting various well-being courses, including breathing techniques, meditation, and yoga. So, dear friends, thank you again, and warm, warm, loving welcome to you. Sarita, namaste. Namaste, Rinuji. Thank you very much for your very kind introduction. Do you know what, like you were saying earlier, I saw Andrea and Sarah perform as well a couple of weeks ago, and they were amazing. So, you know, my expectation level for this week was quite high as it is. But do you know what, they exceeded my expectation once again. They were absolutely amazing. What energy they have. That was incredible. And Namaste Globe. Like I said, my name is Sarita. And I'm part of the Healing Our Earth team. I've been watching all these beautiful programs that we've had so far and I've enjoyed it thoroughly. I hope all of you who are watching are also enjoying it. Now, of course, you know that you can watch us live on healingourearth.com and on our Facebook page, which is Facebook forward slash Healing Our Earth. We're also streaming live on Enrich TV, our associate internet TV. Now, um, before we go any further, let me tell you about our very special session schedule for next week, which is Sunday the 7th of June, and it's called Pure Thoughts, Pure Melodies. It will run from 1.30pm till 6pm and give you the opportunity to come, share, chant, sing with us. So obviously a very interactive session once again. And let's not forget today's session we celebrate World Environment Day, which is on the 5th of June. Climate change and as humans, how we can help. So happy mind, happy planet, and it's powered by Brahma Kumaris. So without wasting much time, let's just go straight on to our next facilitator. That is Luciana Marque de Souza Ferraz from Brazil, who is the national coordinator for the Brahma Kumaris in Brazil and a sociologist and a teacher with a wide experience in the field of training individuals looking for a better life. Her special interest is in social and environmental issues, which has taken her to various international conferences, for example, Rio Plus 20 and UN Climate Change Conference, COP16 in Mexico. She also cooperates with interreligious dialogues such as United religion initiative, that is URI, and lectures on several topics such as human values in life, integral health, positive consciousness, and meditation. Namaste and Om Shanti, Luciana. Thank you so much to have invited me. I'm so honored to be part of this wonderful uh, global online summit, Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. 
and I want to share some ideas of how we can reach this very high goal of health, having a healthy mind and healthy planet. I think that the most precious feeling that uh, we need at the present moment is that uh, we must take care of our home. I think that a caring nature is so essential at this present time when with this pandemic of coronavirus that we are facing, it seems that the whole immense subject of uh, the whole question of uh, uh, the, the planet in terms of the environment and everything has gone through uh, a little bit of being not so talked nowadays because it seems that health issues and economical issues are being more like the central aspect uh, of our life now. So I think that uh, this attitude of caring, especially when we take uh, love and respect for our Mother Earth. It's the most important thing. And for that, we have to create this feeling of love and respect. I know that many religions, they create in children this feeling of respecting the animals, the plants. And I think that we should go back for this kind of education when from our homes, from our religions, from our schools, we have to get back this feeling of honoring the earth as we used to do in the past. I think that another aspect that it's essential at the moment that we are living is to have a simplicity in our lives. Um, people say that to have a minimalist attitude, you don't need to have more than 100 items in your life it's sufficient for your very comfortable living. And I think that 100 items is already a lot. So uh, we can consider that a, a very important aspect of caring for the planet is to have a simple lifestyle. And simple lifestyle involves many aspects, involves the aspects of the, your belongings, involve your aspects of the way that you dress yourself, involves your, the aspect of whatever you eat and the amount you eat, but also involves the aspect of your mind. To have a simple uh, mind in the sense, not of ignorance, not of being someone not very wise, but the opposite. Simple mind means not to complicate life, not to have too many uh, attentions to problems. I think that to have a life that is more concentrated is very important when we are talking about simplicity. Simplicity also in our relationship with people. Uh, people keep uh, many bad feelings and grudges and, uh, in their relationship with others. And it's so important that we have clean heart, clean feelings, and that we don't keep any negative uh, feelings in our hearts, uh, even when situations are not so easy or even when situations are not so pleasant. So I think that together with caring for the planet, we need to have an attitude of simplicity towards life, towards relationships and towards the planet that we live in. The third aspect that it's very much a very dear aspect for the Brahma Kumaris that we advocate in the lifestyle of the members of the Brahma Kumaris is a vegetarian lifestyle. Uh, we know how much the creation of animals and the consumption of animals uh, not just creates a lot of pollution on earth, but also takes a lot of uh, extension of land uh, in our planet on our planet or from our planet, especially for myself who lives, who live in Brazil, and I'm very close in contact with the whole idea and the way that the Amazon is being destroyed for creating fields for the creation of animals. So it's very important that we also take in care, taking consideration 
the importance of this vegetarian lifestyle because it's also a more healthy lifestyle in terms of food and many many people they have some doubts if the vegetarian um, menu uh, would have all the the ingredients necessary of our for our health and definitely it has definitely there is nothing that it's missing in the vegetarian uh, diet if you take a very balanced balanced diet and if you can eat everything that it's uh, natural and uh, uh, of course it's not just to eat lettuce and tomatoes but if you consider all the variety that the vegetarian uh, menu has you would be very healthy and it's cheapest also for our budget and it's very uh, wise choice in terms of our planet. And the fourth aspect that I would like to take in consideration is to have uh, a more uh, clean use of energy, a renewable uh, source of energy. And we have many examples in the Brahma Kumaris, especially in our headquarters, and also in our many centers around the world, but especially taking care, uh, taking consideration of our headquarters. We have our uh, kitchen all managed in uh, renewable energy. And that, uh, that's uh, probably one of the biggest kitchens in terms of uh, renewable energy on, on the planet. And also here where I live, we have a small retreat place and in this retreat place, we are self-independent. Uh, we are self-sufficient uh, in terms of photovoltaic energy, in terms of solar energy, in terms of planting our own vegetables and many other aspects of the uh, very healthy way of living that uh, we are creating. So it's very wonderful to see that more and more people are tending to buy and to apply this energy to their homes and to their whatever uh, cities that they are living in. But especially the Brahma Kumaris has a very advanced uh, attitude in terms of the renewable uh, energy. Uh, I think also that there is a very important aspect in terms of our mind um, because we speak too much about the pollution on earth but how much we are taking care of the pollution of our thoughts and what I see is that most of the people cannot control their thoughts they have these ill feelings towards people who have done something to them and even from morning to evening, uh, they have uh, this uh, running horse in their minds that they are not able really to have a selection of thoughts in their minds. So I think that it's very important to advocate for these positive feelings and positive uh, mind and thoughts, which doesn't mean that you are not seeing reality. It doesn't mean that you are not uh, interpreting reality and all the difficulties and all the problems that there are in the world. But uh, you, ca uh, you can see everything, but still keep a very uh, positive attitude of hope, of uh, courage, of seeing a better future, a better, uh, more light, let us say, in the horizon, which is very important. I think that there is another aspect that it's also important uh, because especially now we are living in a moment and I am here in Brazil where there is so much criticism uh, towards government, towards decision-making powers. And it's true that it's not been a very happy and wise uh, moment that we are living in our country. But still, as much more we give our vibration and our attitude of criticism for these leaders, uh, we are just increasing the power of their negativity. So 
uh, it's very important that uh, together with having this uh, real attitude of what is going on, we change our vibration. We change the conversation that we have inside of us. Instead of just criticizing, instead of just seeing defects, let's spread our good wishes. Let's spread some hope that these people will be able to wake up and take some good decisions. And if we can influence in the whatever is happening in terms of the real political arena, we should do that. But at least we should not be just sitting and criticizing because we are reinforcing all the negativity that is going on in terms of the planet and in terms of whoever are the leaders of our world. Because in fact, I can see that it's not Brazil, the only country that doesn't have a very good leadership. It's, uh, in fact, I think majority of the countries uh, are not having the most wise leadership. I can see in India, I can see in England, it's not much different, much difference. So uh, I think that this is important not to add to the vibration of despair, not to add to the vibration of destruction, but just try to uh, propose through your mind, through your words, through your lifestyle, through the way that you spend your energy, your physical energy, your mental energy, your financial energy, your time, everything, every resource that we have, we should use for creating this better planet that we want. And I think that a healthy planet is also a planet where people have to have this very healthy attitude towards each other. Because towards each other, it means that uh, we have to live with our close ones in a situation of love and harmony. We are seeing the news that, especially during this pandemic, uh, the increase of violence, home violence, has increased so much, something like 20% around the world. world. So I think that uh, if we start to have this attitude of respecting, of accepting, of molding ourselves, uh, of adjusting ourselves, adapting ourselves, uh, to whatever the differences in the personalities, uh, it's very, very important because uh, we are different. We are going to remain different. We are not going to be the same ever. So just uh, to be tolerant, to be adjusting, for that we require power. And I think the way that the Brahma Kumaris promote this inner power is through meditation. Again, that was absolutely amazing, Luciana. Um, to summarize, I loved what you said, which is, you know, create respect for our earth within us and each other. That was amazing. A simple mind, a minimalistic life. Well, 100, you said, and you said that's too much, right? A vegetarian lifestyle, fantastic. And do you know what I loved was also what you said about cleansing the thoughts not just not adding to the vibration of despair and negativity. So I thought that was amazing. Thank you very much, Luciana. That was very enlightening. Thank you. So let's see, what have we had so far? Um, besides the little technical glitch we had, um, so far we've had facilitators from all over the world. We've had from India, Philippines, Hong Kong, Kuwait, Australia, UK, Greece, Germany, Denmark, South Africa, USA, Costa Rica, and Brazil so far. So we're having a truly global session. And we still have presenters from Peru, Canada, Czech Republic, and USA um, to join us. So again, let's go straight on to our next guest, Patricia Iturregi. Yeah, she's on, be mayor. Has. Yeah, okay. Bye. Sorry about that. Patricia Trigi has, as a former officer of the Peruvian government, been a part of many trade and climate change negotiations. She was the first 
climate change. She was the first climate change and air quality director of Peru. Since 2008, she worked for seven years at the British Embassy in Peru as climate secu security and energy advisor. Patricia currently lectures environmental law in Lima and is an environment consultant. She has contributed to the Brahma Kumari's environment initiative with her expertise during the last 10 UN climate change conferences. Namaste, Patricia. Namaste. Very pleased to be with you. I, I just want to begin by saying that I think it was a fantastic idea to put together music with speeches because it's so inspiring. Uh, the, the musicians uh, before me who were singing about love, peace, wisdom was so moving. I really like it. And I think all conferences, forums and webinars should be like that with the mixture of art, music and presentations. <laughs> So congratulations and many thanks for the invitation to this, uh, to this uh, chat, if I may say. So uh, we, we know that terrestrial and marine ecosystems of our current home, uh, the Earth, are suffering of a climate and biodiversity crisis. Uh, human actions threatens uh, more species more than ever, like 25% of species, species is assessed in, in assessed animals and plants are threatened and currently that's around 1 million species already facing extinction. So but there is a single species that is responsible for the COVID-19 pandemic and that is us. So it is a direct consequence of human activity. I don't want to speak about uh, how the scientists of the world through the IPCC estimated that we have only 10 years to speed up the process to clean transportation, energy, industry, buildings, and of course, a drastic stop to deforestation. I don't want to, to, to mention how urgent it is to do this. I don't want to take out your tranquility and uh, saying that if we do not do it, we will have a runaway climate change in the next decades to come. With good intentions, the evolution of ideas and hundreds of thousands of scientists uh, have concentrated their minds in solutions and, of course, the analysis and the causes for this crisis. But I don't want to speak now on how all these solutions have not been heard or badly communicated. I do not want to detail either how the mass media has preferred groups, uh, have, have preferred pessimist views, have preferred prefer gossips, they have preferred pessimistic approaches instead of uh, outraging examples of environmental and social heroes all over the world that are saving nature and, and social uh, communities. I don't want to mention either how badly the people is around the world is feeling more and more unprotected by, by their authorities. I don't want to mention either how the virus of fake news takes out time and how negativity absorb our good energy with so, within social media and social networks. Last but not least, I do not want to recall how many brilliant minds of the IPCC and the Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services have been listened, but with the hearts closed to the environment solutions. So I think that is important what Christiana Figueres said, that we have closed the doors, but we have to open our hearts. So, 
I don't want to mention all these things because it is not the point in time to accept the defeat. Um, we need to find the victory over this crisis with completely different approach. Uh, in other way, so perhaps Einstein was right when he said the world as we have created, is it a process of our thinking? It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. So I would like to, to share um, to share a PowerPoint here, if I may. Mm, no, it's not here. I'm sorry, I cannot. It's not my computer, I'm sorry. So, uh, yes. I so will, I've enabled sharing now. Thank you. Um, yeah, but I cannot find it in the desktop. <laughs> so that's, oh, yes, 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 I find it. Sorry, sorry. It's better because, because you don't see my face all the time. Excellent. It's here. Can you see it, please? Do you see it? Uh, no. Not yet. Not yet. Now you will see it. Yes. 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 Okay. So that's what Einstein said, that the world as we have created, it is a process of our thinking, so it cannot be changed without changing our thinking. So I have uh, uh, good news for you. What would happen if we decide that this pandemia will merge the best of us. So what would happen if all religious and spiritual movements stand together for concrete action on the environmental crisis? Would that be an example on how all dissenting ideologies, political parties or organizations can join together? It would be a fantastic example, isn't it? So interfaith activities is very important. And I have good news for you. The Interfaith Rainforest uh, Initiative is a multi-faith alliance that aims to bring moral urgency and faith-based leaderships to global efforts to end tropical deforestation. It is a platform of religious leaders to work hand in hand with indigenous people, governments, civil society, business, on actions that protect rainforests and safeguard those that serve as the guardians. The coverage of the initiative is 70% of the rainforests worldwide, involving Brazil, Colombia, Congo, Indonesia, and Peru. Other good news is the UNESCO Declaration of Ethical Principles in relation to climate change adopted in 2017 highlights the importance of solidarity, cooperation, responsibility on climate, on climate change action. Is this enough to say that we are changing what we think? Would not be better to do it under an individual approach? Each of us doing things completely different as business as usual. So different things as a result of new thinking and new state of consciousness. Although hearing some good news is energizing, we all know that this pandemic is changing everything and now each being of the world will not be the same anymore. Two things are happening without any doubt people is appreciating and recognizing the value of nature. We heard the doctor from Greece saying that we take, take, take from nature. We buy a banana, but we are not paying nor being grateful with the banana tree that is providing us such a treasure of eating a banana. We take and take from nature and we do not give back. So it's a time to pay back. 
So um, people is getting more and more spiritual. So meditation and mindfulness is everywhere. What would happen if we are the change we want to see? Exactly as Gandhi said. In that case, we would need to do things completely different. Instead of get lost on the immensity of bad news, concentrate on good news, on how to be ourselves better, loyal to ourselves, emotionally protected, with good wishes to us and others, and attached to clear goals, to our specialities, rather than tied to people or things. Of all the wisdom we receive at the World Spiritual University in Brahma Kumaris, one of them is the consistency between thoughts, words and actions. Of course, positive and elevated thoughts. We have to ask ourselves whether we put in practice the thought I had or the thought we had. We receive the recommendations to serve with an honest heart and not only with the head. That is the key. So I just want to show you how is happening, what is happening in the world today. Of all the mammals on earth, we are like the 36%. Livestock and pets are 60% and wild mammals are only 4% of the world. We need to change this dramatically. We need to, to pay back to nature. In other ways, we need to protect wildlife and protect ourselves as well. So um, here, uh, we need to think that biodiversity is very important. We need to measure our impact in biodiversity, especially the food we consume and avoid meat, of course. Uh, so if you may like to gather some tips, here they are. On climate change individually, we just need to do three things. We need to measure our personal or family carbon footprint. So three things, we need to measure our carbon footprint. Secondly, do something about it. And third, if feasible, compensate the part that cannot be reduced directly by us. So, uh, Um, I just want to, to say that as a vegetarian, I always say to my friends that, yes, I don't want to be the intellectual author of a murder. So if I'm going to buy meat in the supermarket, I am the intellectual author of a murder. So uh, that's like... A, I think I do, I say to my friends, but I just want to, to, to say that as we know, planet Earth is immense, but our being is also immense. And to go inside myself is to encounter with all the human beings, wildlife and ecosystem. And I just want to finish by reading what Einstein said that a human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limiting, limited in time as, and space, the experiences himself, he experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. It's a kind of prison. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our, priest, our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty. Namaste.
Namaste, Patricia. Thank you very much for that. That was absolutely amazing. What you spoke about correlation between thoughts, words, and actions, that was absolutely amazing. Thank you very much for being here today. I think you're still sharing your screen. So would you unshare, please? Admin, would you be able to unshare the screen? And let Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Admin. Right, so let's go on to our next uh, facilitator, all the way from Brazil. Alex Pochot is a composer, performer, researcher, and music producer from Salvador in Bahia, Brazil. PhD in music composition, University Federal da Bahia, Brazil. Raj Yoga teacher at the Brahmakumaris, for 17 years. Namaste and welcome, Alex. Hey, Sarita, thank you so much. Uh, it's really a privilege to be invited here by this, the Healing Our Earth team uh, on this summit, Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. I really feel honored and uh, very happy to be part of this uh, gathering, such uh, an auspicious gathering. And uh, talking about happiness, uh, I would like to contribute playing a song and, uh, that talks about happiness. You know, I, I come from this uh, city, in fact, I am here now in Salvador de Bahia, in Brazil, that it's known as uh, the land of happiness. So I thought the whole theme of uh, healing the mind, healing the planet, uh, I think happiness, I think we all think that happiness is a very important ingredient. And this song talks about this time to come that uh, not only a few uh, would be happy, but everybody together would be happy. It's like a picture of this uh, world, world that we all want. Uh, the name of the song is Aera do Sol, something like uh, the Sun Era or Sun Dynasty. I will sing in Portuguese. I hope you don't mind, but you can get the vibes. I hope so. And uh, it's like that. It's like a picture, very few words, in fact. Okay.
time will come for you and me and every one of us and with new colors spreading all its love comes the dynasty of the sun Vibrações em cores e som And with new colors Spreading all its love Comes the dynasty of the sun Thank you. Thank you very much and namaste. That was beautiful from a simple message to a little bit of music to lighten our mood. Let's go off to our next facilitator, which is from here from the UK. Lugo Stranta is an experienced holistic and wellness practitioner with a master's degree in acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. Being a practitioner of massage therapy as well, Yugo Stranta skillfully weaves a balance of acupressure, Chinese herbs, the five elements theory, and postural corrections, ritual and focus in every treatment session. He exudes a never ending enthusiasm for health and harmony, bringing together the unity of body, mind, and soul. So let's welcome Lubo Stranta. Namaste. Hello, everyone. I want to thank you very much for my introduction to Sarita. Namaste. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. What a privilege it is to be invited. Could you turn up your volume a bit, please? Sorry. Okay. Your volume. We can't hear you very well. Oh. The output okay. speaker. Louder. Can you hear me now? Better. Better. Admin. Hello, everyone. Again, I want to thank you very much for my introduction to Sarita. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, what a privilege it is to be invited by the Healing Our Health team on this global online summit, Healthy Mind and Healthy Planet. My name is Lubos and I am an acupuncture practitioner in London. In traditional Chinese medicine, we recognize five elements. Every one of them is very unique and important. Each of us has a very unique makeup of those elements. Practitioners of Chinese medicine should know how to balance all elements so the harmony and energy flow is natural and holistically established. Practitioners have tools to do this. Uh, they can use Chinese herbs, acupuncture, acupressure, massage, which is called tuina. They can use dietary and lifestyle advice or exercises qigong. Because today we are celebrating World Environmental Day, I would like to introduce for you one particular element, which is very specific, very specific and very unique. This element is all about nourishment, vitality, and harmony. Today, we will talk about earth element. Planet Earth feeds us and obviously heals us. The ancient Chinese understood the human being are part of the web of life. And Earth is the source of all nourishment and vitality. The Earth element and five element acupuncture theory is regarded as the center of the five elements. Everything is born from 
and it will return to the earth. Proper nourishment of body, mind, and spirit is vital to internal harmony and well being. By understanding how the earth element works within us and around us, we can learn to cultivate physical, emotional, and spiritual health in challenging and often toxic environment or in the toxic world around us. The body contains a circulatory system of vital energy flow. In the Chinese medicine, it is called the acupuncture meridians. Each of the five elements governs a pair of meridians which relate to different system of the body, mind, and spirit. The meridians of the earth elements which governs digestion are the stomach and the spleen. It is important to understand that those don't relate one-on-one -on -one to the organs of the same name in Western medicine. But rather, we can understand them as the energetical value of a particular organ. A robust earth element brings nourishment to each and every part of body, mind, and spirit. The work of the earth meridians and related organs in receiving, transforming, and transporting nourishment is indeed at the center of our well-being. Stability, security, and harmony depend on the nourishment that we receive through the earth element. Earth is the foundation on which everything rests. Tending the earth element is a cornerstone of all physical, mental, and emotional healing. In the earth element is imbalance or weak, sorry, if the earth element is imbalanced or weak, every part of our being will suffer for lack of proper nourishment. Fortunately, there are many things we can do to support the earth element and ensure that we have the best possible chance to heal. So what can we do? How can we heal and balance the earth element within us? I will give you some tips now which you can use for yourself to heal earth element within you. We can eat a nutrient-dense whole foods diet that provides all the nutrients we need for physical and mental health. We should also avoid information overload by maintaining a healthy mental diet and limiting exposure to media and advertising. The other thing what we can do is it will help if we shift our consciousness and if we give the critical thinking mind a bit of break by taking up a creative hobby, for example, such, an, such as dance, music, or arts and crafts. We should learn practice body mind wellness method like yoga, meditation, or Tai Chi, which shift the nervous system away from defensive fight or fly, sympathetic, towards the rest and digest, which is rather parasympathetic. And mainly then exercise outdoor and spend time in natural green spaces. Touch the earth to support the earth element within us. Two articles will follow this short workshop. One of them is one of them is the first one is yellow food, which in moderation will balance and help harmonize two main organs of earth element, which are spleen and stomach. Any food in yellow, orange color is perfect. And especially then in the fifth season of the year, which Chinese call late summer. 
If you are interested in the food for other four seasons, please email me and I will send you the rest of the cards. In the second article, I would love to share with you one very special acupuncture point, which is called Spring 6, which you can actually stimulate for and by yourself. The point is Spring 6, it's in Chinese it's called San Yin Jiao. It's located on the inside of your leg, just above your ankle. To find this point, you have to locate the highest peak of the ankle. From the highest point, then four finger width up on your leg. We should apply intense pressure slightly behind the bone, which is called tibia, and massage the area for about four to five seconds on both legs. That was my advice, how to heal earth element within us. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you very much for your acupuncture to it, uh, trip, tips, and we'll certainly be trying all of that out. Our next guest is from the Czech Republic. Um, I understand it's a video they're going to play. And his name is Peter Krotto and is one of the most distinctive and charismatic musicians in the Czech Republic. Peter is the founder and heartbeat of a big band, Ojnu Vintage Orchestra, where he acts as band leader, soloist, singer, and music ranger. He was the only Czech musician to play at the opening festival of the Olympics in London. So let's go over to our video. Well, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear friends all around the planet. It's a great pleasure to be part of this lovely program, of this activity. And uh, my name is Petr Krautil. I'm from the Czech Republic, and this is uh, my house close to Prague. I really appreciate that I can take part of this, of this afternoon, and uh, I would love to say something wise and intellectual, but I'm not that kind of guy, I'm not that smart. But one thing I can do quite, uh, I'm pretty good at it, it's music, because I've been a jazz musician for over 30 years now, and uh, I'm a saxophone and a singer, and I run my own big band, Original Vintage Orchestra, for some time. And uh, what I can contribute for healing the planet, healing the earth, it's playing music. Nothing wise from me, from the Czech Republic, but a little bit of music. And I, uh, I will try. I'll do my best to cheer you up a bit. And uh, please, your spirit, your soul, and uh, raise you up a bit, if it's possible, with music. This song's called What a Wonderful World. So I, would, I would say this is one of the most beautiful jazz songs I've ever heard, and this planet that has ever heard. Hurt, and uh, was made famous by Louis Armstrong. What a wonderful world. Happy listening. Here we go. <laughs> Baby. 
trees cry, our boys then grow. They learn much more than I'll ever know. And I say to myself, what a wonderful world. <laughs> It's amazing. Do you know what? That's one of my best, most favorite songs. What a wonderful world this is. And let's all get together and make sure this world stays as wonderful by taking responsibility for everything around us. Right, so let's go on to our next facilitator. His name is Yuan Vesquez. I hope I pronounced his surname properly. Yuan is a homeopath, naturopath, member of the Sustainable Development Group of the National Bank of Canada, the BK's representative to the UN and former candidate for the Green Party of Canada. With 10 years of experience, UN has been a leader in the deep ecology movement that responds to the need for spiritual transformation in the context of climate change, sustainable development and biodiversity. Namaste Yuan and welcome. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, everyone, and thank you. Uh, namaste. Uh, greetings to everyone. And first of all, thank you to Healing Our Earth to, for putting this wonderful program together, an online summit. Uh, uh, I think that technology is now a wonderful tool for making these uh, events happening across the world and lowering our carbon emissions, which is a great thing. I think that that's also has a very big potential for us in the future. So thank you for the presentation. And yes, I'm, uh, I'm Juan, I live in Montreal. And um, uh, as, as she mentioned, uh, uh, Sarita, I am um, the Brahma Kumari's representative, one of the Brahma Kumari's representatives at the UN. And I've been uh, since very young age, uh, very interested in ecology have uh, with my dad with my mom they t they really taught me how to to love nature to love the planet and since very young i started to to get um involved or be very curious about healing uh, i remember my grandmother um, uh, going to the homeopath naturopath so since then i always had this um uh, interesting curiosity about healing so today i'm going to speak to you uh, from that perspective as a homeopath, as a naturopath, and also as a yogi from the Brahma Kumaris, how this uh, 
wonderful experiences have taught me throughout the, the last 10 years uh, by going to the UN conferences, by teaching meditation, how uh, um, we can transform our inner ecology and therefore transform the ecology of the planet. Um, as you know, I want to start some uh, saying that the planet is alive and it's not only the planet that is alive, the universe is also part of this uh, human project that is now taking place. So we are a project of the universe. We are a project in a way of, of Mother Earth. And as we know, we evolve as a species, as a spiritual organisms. And as a whole, we have a duty to become our guardians and custodians of the planet and by resonating and by tuning into the, the signs of nature and the universe, we can be in tune uh, with the transformation that is taking place. So I guess uh, in my own beliefs that uh, pandemics are, has their own good things too, because as any disease is, uh, they're here to taught us about ourselves, about how we think, about how we feel, how we behave. So disease is not something, just something negative. They have their own positive side of things. If we understand the, the, the why disease and, and these kind of events happen as, a, uh, as human beings. So I wanted to share today about the process of homeostasis, uh, the universe, the earth, uh, the body, the soul, everything. There is a power within uh, this uh, reality that we call homeostasis. And homeostasis is a power that works through our consciousness. So and it's a power that unifies and, 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 and tries to bring wholeness and healing to the planet, to the universe, to, to communities, to ecosystem, to animals. So um, one of the aims for this event was to, to, uh, to remember that 5th of June is International Day of, uh, of, uh, of the Environment with the team of biodiversity. So homeostasis works also for us. So I'm, I'm inviting you to, 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 to reflect on this concept of, of homeostasis because it's something that uh, is very uh, hopeful. Uh, homeostasis is something that happens uh, within us. So to give you an example, when, um, when the body is sick, when you cut yourself, there's always the tendency of the body to heal naturally. So if you cut, there's always going to be something trying to, you know, your, your cells, um, all your, your healing energy of the body activates that, you know, the mechanism activates to heal, to make you feel good, to make you feel happy again, to make you feel uh, ready to, to do uh, and enjoy life and, and, and work and all the things that we, we do in life. So um, by meditating, we can tap into the deeper aspect of homeostasis and homeostasis is something that begins in our soul. So if we understand the soul as the most sacred and the most profound aspect of the human being, we can therefore understand that the soul uh, with the mind, with the intellect and with the memories that we carry deep in the soul, that's what homeostasis begins. And I think meditation and for those who know Brahma Kumaris, we, we teach meditation and we, we, we try to invite people to go within and find uh, the inner treasures are deep down within the soul, you know, the virtues, the powers, virtues such as peace, such as love, healing, uh, happiness, and also the powers that helps us to, to live in our everyday life, like power to face, the power to cooperate, the power uh, to let go. So there are many beautiful uh, treasures inside the soul that we can uh, hope we can tap into when we meditate and, and bring this beautiful ecosystem that we have within us and, um, and share it with others. So when my inner ecology begins to flourish, uh, also my thoughts, my ideas, my concepts, um, my, my relationship with my body, the relationship with, with others, with my communities. Uh, and as a politician, I, I have always tried to bring this power of homeostasis of, of well-being within politics, because I think that we're now in a very transformative place where we can bring well-being also in society. So homeostasis is uh, something that we can tune in and, 
and gives it's actually a psychology of hope because homeostasis helps us to understand that the whole universe, the whole Earth, Gaia as an entire uh, planet, and also the soul, uh, our souls, uh, the body are working together to bring homeostasis to to our reality. So. I want to invite you to follow me in a very uh, uh, in a meditation that we can tap together into this power of homeostasis and begin the process of what I call ecosynthesis. Ecosynthesis is really the power of going within and find harmony within in your thoughts, within your feelings, and bring this energy out to the world. So meditation is a great tool. So if you want to join me, I invite you to, to relax and take a few moments of, um, of uh, relaxation, to leave behind all the things and the stress, perhaps, or maybe just having a little moment for yourself now. I know we have this wonderful speaker, so we can actually maybe receive that energy, though, that wisdom from others in this moment. So if you can close your eyes or you can leave your eyes open. And I invite you to breathe in and exhale. Breathe in and exhale. So we do this to bring the body into a halt, into stillness. So we can then start the journey within. Going deep into our souls. So slowly with the power of silence and peace, we can tap into our core, our self, and just following this energy of peace. If we just let go of any sort of a stress, anything that is holding us and we let go to flow with the energy of peace, the energy of love. And there in our consciousness, we can find the power of homeostasis, a very holistic power that heals the mind, and can heal the planet as well. Feeling the energy of peace is healing the body, healing the mind, healing everything that is around us. That power allows us to let go of any anxiety, fear, frustration and actually tap into the hope to the energy of hope because hope is the energy that would lead our way into the future it allows us to connect with God the divine it allows us to give energy to the planet and to Gaia so we become transmitters of peace and love to ourselves, our thoughts, all our organs and systems. And by feeling good, by feeling well, we can contribute to the healing and the well-being of the planet. So slowly coming back by breathing in, breathing out. So meditation is a wonderful opportunity for us to enrich ourselves, to nourish our inner ecosystem, like our spiritual ecosystem, but also our cells and organs. So again, this is the power of homeostasis, the power of finding peace at the core of ourselves, but also understanding that that power flows throughout the universe, throughout Earth, throughout 
people and that if we tap into it, if we can connect with the divine, there's no limitations to the things that we can achieve. And I just want to end uh, my session by quoting um, the um, Thomas Berry, which is one of our wonderful um, wise persons uh, from the United States that I ever heard. And he says that we must first have a vision of the future sufficiently entrancing that it will sustain us in the transformation of the human process. He says such an entrancing vision of the, of the future that we propose here is the Ecozoic era, a period when humans will become a mutually beneficial presence on earth. So I'll leave you with that to reflect how can we become a mutual beneficial presence on earth from now on, and how we can do that on our daily lives. So thank you and namaste, Om Shanti. Namaste. That was beautiful, Yvonne. Your meditation was absolutely amazing and everything you said is so, so true. Mutually beneficial. So let's all strive to do that. So from Yuan in Canada to Jim in the USA. Jim Pamer is the president of Pamer Communications Group, a leading edge media company consulting Fortune 500 executives. He is a four-time Emmy Award winning journalist, previously SVP Corporate Communication PepsiCo, Professor of Business Communications Molloy College, and an advocate of environmental issues. Namaste, Jay. Jim Pamer. Namaste. Namaste, Sarita. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Well, I just want to say that I'm very happy to be part of uh, Healing Our Earth. Uh, it's a very nice day here in New York. We are at the epicenter of the uh, coronavirus. So it has not been too pleasant here. Uh, we've been locked down for quite a while. And uh, hopefully we're getting a little bit better here. And uh, hopefully the world heals as well. And you know, it's a real pleasure to be speaking to you all today about something that's very near and dear to my heart, which is saving our precious earth from the ravages of pollution and climate change. Uh, I'd like to start off by telling you a personal story about how I became involved with the environmental movement. I was uh, born and raised in a place called Duluth, Minnesota, and I'm going to try and share my screen with you right now so you can see. Uh, let me just get here for one second. Share my screen here. And, uh, put this up here. Okay. So can you see the pictures here? Or not? I guess no one can hear me, but uh, well, maybe, maybe they're not sharing the pictures. But uh, I was born and raised on uh, the western tip of Lake Superior in a place called Duluth, Minnesota. And uh, we were blessed with being on this wonderful lake, uh, which actually has 10% of all the fresh water on planet Earth. It is so big, it's the size of Australia, if, uh, Austria, I should say. Uh, when I grew up in the 50s and the 60s, our water came directly from the lake. It was so pure, you could just drink it right out of the lake. And to the north of Duluth, there were these beautiful stands of red and white pine. There were 15 million trees covering 17 million acres of Minnesota. Today, all but 40 acres remain. We lost them all, except for the 40 acres. They're called the Lost 40. And apparently the timber barons forgot to put these on the map. So they are preserved, but everything else disappeared. Also to the north of us was a place called the Iron Range, where iron ore was ripped and clawed from the earth and sent to steel mills across the Great Lakes uh, and turned into steel products. Now, the raw iron ore eventually gave out and engineers found a rock that had between 25% of ore still remaining in the rock. And, and a company called Reserve Mining came in and they built a plant on Lake Superior to crush the rock and extract the remaining ore 
uh, and they, this was called taconite. I don't know if you've ever heard that word. But when they were crushing the rock, there were all these uh, sediments left behind from the rock, which were dumped directly into Lake Superior. 67,000 tons every single day dumped into this beautiful, magnificent lake that was so huge and that was so wonderful. By the late 60s, environmental groups and legal groups uh, started to challenge this company. Uh, and they knew all about the pollution that was being caused. And within these taconite tailings were asbestos fibers. And in those asbestos fibers, they flowed down to where we lived at the edge of the lake and along a lot of other communities. And here we had, we had the freshest, purest water in the world. We had to go to a temporary filtration center and uh, bring plastic jugs down and collect water because we could no longer drink water out of our lake. It was just, it was appalling and it was shocking and we, and we were all very stunned. Uh, and, uh, you know, this was a, a cancer-causing agent. I, my best friend, who was 35 years old, believed he died as a result of the asbestos fibers. Well, the people started taking action, and we fought back with lawsuits against the Minnesota State Supreme Court. Eventually, it was ended, and they put these tailings on land, which I don't know what the environmental impact has been. I've been gone so long now, but there's a huge blot in Lake Superior of this taconite. And it can never be removed because you can't stir it up because the cancer-causing tailings will then be distributed in the lake. So, you know, rampant greed, mining, logging, fossil fuels, agricultural companies, they were ravaging the earth. I then moved to British Columbia in Canada where I started my radio and I, I saw the rampant destruction of the forest clear cutting, which I'd never seen before. Uh, total mountains just looked like a moonscape. <clears throat> and it, I just, I couldn't believe what they had done. <clears throat> no, no replanting, nothing. Just bare, bare land. Uh, you know, and this is going on all around the world. Luciana earlier talked about what was going on in the Amazon. We know that this is going on in Borneo and Sumatra. Uh, er, er, everywhere that there is, is some resource, <clears throat> you have greedy, rich corporations and individuals who are laying claim to it. And at the same time, we're destroying the planet. So let me fast forward to uh, about 1986. I'm now working at the NBC television station in San Francisco. And I went to the Philippines to cover the election of Ferdinand Marcos, who was a brutal dictator, stealing billions of dollars from his own people. And he was challenged by a woman by the name of Corazon Aquino. Her husband was assassinated because he was supposed to be the original contender against Marcos. But his wife, Corazon, took over. They blamed, of course, Marcos for his assassination. We don't know to this date what happened. But I'd like to show you a short story of what is actually transpiring uh, today and has transpired in uh, the Philippines when I went there. Manila, capital city of the Philippines where one out of every seven Filipinos lives. Manila is a city of high-rise hotels, gleaming office towers, the base in the Pacific for multinational corporations. It is home port for this island nation on the South China Sea. Jim? Uh, this is Jim. another side Jim. of Manila. Jim? Yes? Mountain, the we can't enough. see anything. We can only hear you. Hear the, the tape. Can't see it? But this is much more than a dump. It is home to thousands of Filipinos who have no other place to call. Jim, you can start again. You need to share your screen so we see your screen. Thank you. And the poverty of a place like We have given you a co-host. You are going to share screen, Jim. I can't uh, 
Can you stop the can you stop the video? Share the screen. I'm trying to. I'm trying to stop the sound. That's it. Now, now play it, please. Yes. It's Get the video and play. Probably the worst that I've ever. No, Jim, you are back again. You need to share the screen. Let me just let me just stop this here. Get whatever they can Sorry about that. Sell. Okay, stop the video first, share the screen, and then play, please. Video, the audio. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, no panic, we are all here, we are learning, so okay. no worry at all. We are at the tail end, let's have good fun. To make a long story short, what happened was we went to this place called Smoky Mountain, and it was a mountain of garbage. and there were people living all around this massive mountain of garbage. Uh, there was no fresh water. There was uh, open pit sewage. Uh, little kids were clawing through the garbage to pick out a piece of metal or something that could be sold. Uh, you know, it just was total desperation. And I think that we're finding this going on all around the world. Uh, we're seeing that we are not caring for our we are letting our earth be ravaged by corporations who are only seeking profit. And we, we've got to stop this because we are, we're running into a situation where we are into an unsustainable period of time. We have 7.2 billion people on planet earth today. This is gonna to grow to 10 billion people by the year 2050. If we can't support ourselves today, what is the world going to look like when we have another two to three billion people on it? We're using, as Luciano was talking about in the Amazon, uh, with, with the raising of cattle. Did you know that if cattle were a country and in production of methane gases and greenhouse gases, they would rate number three after the uh, People's Republic of China and the United States as the leading emitter of greenhouse gases. We're cutting down the Amazon so that we can have more grazing land for cattle. We're giving them feed full of antibiotics, meaning that if we get sick and go to a hospital, that we have less of a chance of getting cured because we already have all these antibiotics in our system if we're eating beef. <clears throat> we're also seeing on an almost daily basis some kind of uh, demise of the ice caps, whether it's in the Arctic or in the Antarctic, uh, whether it's Greenland, huge ice sheets falling into the sea. 10 to uh, 15 uh, of these sheets have already fallen in into the sea. If we have sea rise of 5, 10, 15, 20 feet in the future, what is going to happen to the people who live in the coastal regions of our world? Because right now, 2.4 billion people, about 40% of the world's population, live within 60 miles or 100 kilometers of the coast. There's going to be mass dislocation of people from places like New York, like London, like Mumbai, like Buenos Aires, like Los Angeles. Where are they gonna go? They're gonna go inland. And who is going to pay the price? Poor people who don't have any resources, who will be pushed out by rich people. Uh, I was thinking about this since we, are at the epicenter of the coronavirus, how this pandemic, in a way, in the way that I think anyway, comes from kind of a higher power, a higher source. The way that we were living our lives, the way that we have been destroying our environment, it's almost like the pandemic went, boom, stop it, or you will not survive. And so what happened? We stopped driving. All the planes were grounded. Factories came to a halt. And what did we find? Pollution was reduced 50 to 60% in places like New Delhi during the lockdown. 
in Beijing, in Los Angeles, in London, they could finally see a blue sky, which, you know, usually they're covered by fog and pollution. We have the means and the capability of changing the way that we live in order for us to thrive and survive as a people. We can get rid of fossil fuels, except that there is so much money involved. Our politicians, you know, they look the other way because campaign contributions are coming to them and they are uh, able to get reelected into office because the oil companies have tremendous financial resources. But at the same time, we know that we can transform and we can have a metamorphosis of the way that we put together our energy resources. We can use wind, we can use solar, we can use tidal and get rid of natural gas and get rid of coal and get rid of oil as the way that we heat our, our, our houses, our buildings, what we use to electrify our systems. We, we must do this, it's an imperative. Because I'll tell you, I have five children and I have three grandchildren. And I really would love to see them grow up in a verdant world of, of greenery. Out, outside I can see a, a lot of big trees. And I grew up, as I mentioned, in Duluth, uh, Minnesota, it, a beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous lake, 42 streams flowing into that lake. To the south of me, I have the Atlantic Ocean. To the north of me, I have Long Island Sound. But will my kids and my grandkids be able to enjoy these resources like I have? Now, somehow, we, we have these beautiful conversations of Brahma Kumari, and I've been a, involved with the Brahma Kumari for, what, 35 years since I met uh, Sister Chandru in San Francisco uh, and uh, Sister Elizabeth at Anabudi Center in New England and uh, met Dottie Jonke a, a couple of times, once in London and once in Reykjavik. And I just feel that if we as a people, as a community, cannot find a way to collectively work together, nations of the world, governments of the world, that we are not going to survive. We cannot be in competition with the Chinese and the Russians and the Europeans and the Latin Americans over who is going to control the resources and the industrialization and the manufacturing of the globe. We really have to figure out a way to work together collectively as a human species, or, you know, I just, I, I think that very bad things are gonna come in the future. If you have dislocation of so many millions of people from coastal regions, if you continue to take away the lungs of our earth, which are in the rainforest of, of Borneo and Sumatra and the Amazon and British Columbia, what air are we going to breathe? Right now, they know for a fact that with coronavirus, the people whose lungs are already compromised by pollution, they are 15 to 20% more likely to uh, get coronavirus. And so, you know, there is a dynamic at work here with the disease and the way that we've been living our lives, globalization, a collapsing economy. Uh, I don't know if you folks around the world have been seeing what's been going on in America. We've had four nights of rioting in the, in the city where I went to the University of Minnesota, in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They've, they've been burning down buildings because there's been yet another police killing. We have autocrats that, uh, that are controlling many of our countries from here in the United States, Donald Trump, uh, Bolsonaro in Brazil, El Sisi in Egypt, Duterte in, in the Philippines, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, these people are not thinking about the common man. They're thinking about how they can enrich the already rich. And we just cannot go on in this direction. And while it's very nice to I love hearing the music. Uh, I love Lucinda. I've been listening to Bliss for, for many, many years. I, I love the meditation. I love going to the Brahma Kumari centers. I've been to Oxford and London and all of the ones here in New York and up to the Catskill Mountains. But is it enough? We have 
got to start putting pressure on governments, on manufacturing enterprises, on executives to change the way that we operate in this world. Or I, I really believe that my children and my grandchildren are going to suffer. And I feel really bad. You know, my heart aches that this is, you know, I'm 69 years old right now. And this is the legacy that my generation is leaving the next generation. I mean, we are just a tiny speck in the universe. And I have this, I don't know if you can see it, but this is, a, it's a paperweight. It's, it's a picture of the globe you know, wrapped in glass. And it, I can hold it in my hand. But if any of you have ever been out into a starlit night, and you look out at the cosmos, at the universe, we are as tiny as this when it comes to the cosmos and the universe. And somehow, we have got to collectively come together and protect this small blue orb that we all live on. 7.2 billion people today, 10 billion people by the year 2050. We've got to figure out a way of providing enough food, of stopping the pollution, of stopping the conflict between peoples. I mean, it's, it's absolutely imperative, the wars that are going on endlessly throughout my lifetime. I have a, a, a picture over in the corner here. My, my wife got it for my birthday. It's my birth date, 11 19 It talks about uh, UN US forces bombing Korea. Well, 69 years ago, we're still fighting that war. The Palestinians and the Israelis still fighting that war. The Pakistanis and the Indians still fighting that war. When does it end? And I think, have I gone to my limit? Sarita? Thank you very much, Jim. Okay. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing. I'm sorry about the video. I had, I had two great videos and lots of pictures to show you and I shared the screen before and it just didn't work. No <laughs> worries at all. Thank you very much for coming here today with this very somber message. That was amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah. And again, we're still with the USA and we'd like to call on Christine Hoffman, whose goal is to spread love, light, peace and truth into the world through the vehicles of music and energetic frequency. A strong advocate for peace and ocean conservation, Christine has appeared internationally at environmental concerts and conventions, including TEDx in San Francisco. Her songs reflect her personal luminosity, her warmth, and her talent for bringing out music's healing power. Namaste and welcome, Christine Hoffman. Thank you, Sarita. It's such an honor to be here sharing during Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. I am just sending my heartfelt love and peace to everyone who's with us today. And I'd like to share a piece. I'll start with a, a chant about compassion. And then I'm going to go into a free flow improvisation. And I'd like to feel like we are all, send your heartfelt intention. We're all going to be singing together. And may I just be a pure vehicle for, for the divine and for all of our voices to come through. Much love. Karuna Nayan.
That was absolutely beautiful, Christine. Thank you very much. Christine, it, I mean, all I can say is you obviously sing from your heart because it's reached out to me for sure. Um, so thank you very much for that. So Christine, what brought you into um, oceans and conservation? What, what brought you on that path? Yes, hold on, let me turn my effect off. Here we go. Thank you so much. Um, Ocean, and ocean work and conservation has always been so important to me in my life. I grew up living in the woods and hiking and nature really, I think, was my first connection to meditation. When I would go into nature, I would feel immediately in connection with divine creator energy and closest with my soul path and my spirit. So taking care of this planet has been a call, an inner call, and an outer call for years now. And I feel that about 10, ten years ago, or a bit more, I really, my, my call to use music as a powerful vehicle, as the powerful vehicle it is, to share awareness about our planet, became, it became more important to me than ever before. I think that it's beautiful to be a performer and whatnot, although I'm feeling at this point in my life the utmost importance to we to use my gifts and encourage everyone. Everyone has unique gifts that are we, we are born with. And may we all just remember in this moment that we can use our gifts as a powerful way to share our passion and our our caretaking for this planet and for each other. So that is that is my mission, and I try my best to be fully embodied in it every day. That is amazing. Thank you very much, Christine. That Thank was you. beautiful. And honestly, like I said, I could feel that. I could feel the energy. I could feel the luminosity. So absolutely well done, and thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm excited. I believe my, my dear brother, Paul Luftenegger, is, is coming on next, and I just want to send him my my biggest hug and I'm very excited to to hear his wonderful music. Aww. Thank you for having me. Nice. Thank you very much for that, Christine. So you've actually very beautifully brought that forward as well, which is we're off to Canada next online, of course. And we've got Paul of Nega next. And Paul is an international multi-award singer. Um, and he's a songwriter and a composer who writes conscious music to inspire and promote global love and kindness from within. Paul's focus is growing and nurturing self-worth within the listener. Paul is a leader in his new genre of music. He calls conscious healing music to empower the listener's heart and soul to thrive. Now, Paul's song Diamond Light won the Honorable Mention Award from the USA um, songwriting competition in 2013 and the album of the same name won the top 10 awards in London by the London Free Press as well. So Paul is in the process of re releasing his seventh album titled Seeds of Peace funded by his worldwide fans and his music is being used in classrooms to help children understand the importance of self-love and self-kindness. That is so beautiful. Namaste Paul and welcome to our forum. Global Namaste. I'm so grateful to be here. 
there, I don't know if you can, can you hear me? Sorry, the video was just popping up there, but there we are. So I wanted to just say thank you and a global namaste to everyone joining in together. Um, I'm so grateful to be here today. And I just wanna say thank you from Canada. I know that the pandemic right now has influenced all of us and it's a global event. And I pre-recorded this video so that the sound quality could be intimate. Um, I always struggle a little bit with online. Um, I think just the, the clarity through online Kristen, who just sang, I need to learn from Kristen how she managed to do that live because um, my expertise in that particular way is not as, as sort of effective. So I wanted to record this so that it could be the best sound quality. So I've done that um, and you have the video to play. Fantastic. Um, admin, would you be playing that for us, please? And then we'll come back to you if you don't mind. So please don't go away, Paul. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Paul Leftenegger. I'm a multi award winning singer, songwriter, and composer. And I'm coming to you live today from Canada. Um, and I was asked to be a part of this wonderful day to honor the world ultimately. And um, in particular, the environment. And one of the things that I know to be very true is that ultimately the world changes when we change. And this truth is very um, important to sort of, I think, recognize right now during these, these huge shifts that are happening on the planet, especially during the pandemic. So we're in this new space, this uncharted territory. And the thing that I decided to do is I have a lot of music. Um, I have seven albums, but I wanted to sing a song that honors you and your soul and your heart and to just say thank you. So to really give a moment for you to feel your divinity within, your sacredness within, and to honor the space of that beauty that actually can change the world. So this is uh, my song, Thank You. I hope you like it. And um, with the, you know, with the environment that we're in, I have to do this at home. So this is my home studio. So welcome. And um, I hope you like it. Here we go. <laughs> Reminding me I'm a miracle Just like you 
I just want to thank you for being all the love that you are and from my heart and soul to your heart and soul again the world changes when we change and i just want to hold your hand from my heart and my soul and honor you for being the miracle that you are so uh, live from canada have a beautiful rest of your day and thank you again for this wonderful opportunity to share a moment of love and gratitude bye everyone and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for, thank you. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you for being you too. And thank you for coming to our lovely little forum. Now, Paul, I was on your website, so I looked at it. And just wondering, why do you call yourself the musical alchemist? A beautiful name. But how did that come about? Well, the long story short is in, um, you know, it's interesting. I want to just mention the Healthy Mind, Healthy Planet. I want to say thank you to you for doing this. And of course, the Brahma Kumari and all the sisters and brothers around the world. Um, the reason why I call myself what I do is in, in 2011, my father, or sorry, um, long story short is my father took his own life in 2011. And I had an experience with God. Um, when, and the thing that I think most people don't understand that don't understand, you know, the way God works, God is alchemy in every way. So God sort of works this magical wonder um, and space through the inside. And I think until we can understand that God sort of works like Wi-Fi, always there, always present. And in, in so many ways, I'm an alchemist because I feel that when we lift our vibrations up, which is why music is so powerful, it's the one thing that can get inside of us. I have learned answering the call from God to, to do what I do, which we all have the ability to do, you know, our own unique vibration um, is an alchemy because it helps other people understand energy. So I think that, you know, we're in a time, obviously, you know, these times have been predicted. And we need to go back to the sacred technologies, which is very much alchemy. Um, and we, I think, need to understand that music is a very powerful vessel to allow us to be at peace within ourselves. And when we get to that space, that's where we find God most clearly. So I love, um, you know, Kristen saying before, I felt so at peace when she sang. And that's the magic and alchemy of music. Amazing. Well, thank you very much for coming here, Paul. And thank you very much for spreading the positivity and the alchemy. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. And a, a global Om Shanti to everyone. Om Shanti. <laughs> Om Shanti to you too, Kristin. <laughs> right. Um, so we've, let's, let's go into our, our who made this event happen then from the Healing Our Earth team. There's obviously our program director, Neil Kumar. There's our technical director, who's Niship Kotak, and Malish, um, who is our co-technical director. Now our host team, which is Simon Lahuja, Dr. Lalit Soda, Renu Gidimal, and myself, uh, of course, Sarita. Media team, Kesh Majaria, Marsha Mistri, Anita Nomila, and our backup team, Dr. Milan Shah, Deepa Vitlani, 
Prash Kotecha and Nitin Bhai Palan. Now, let's really, I'm mentioning them the last, but certainly not the least, a very, very sincere thank you to our Brahma Kumari, um, team of Brahma Kumaris, for all this support in putting this beautiful program together. Um, we would probably not have been able to do it without their help and support. Thank you very much. Um, so let's not forget also in today's session, we celebrate World Environment Day, which is on the 5th of June, climate change and as humans and the correlation and how we can help. So how we can make happy mind and happy planet, healthy mind and healthy planet. And it's powered by the Brahma Quarries. Our very special schedule also for next week, Sunday the 7th of June, named Pure Thoughts, Pure Melodies. And it will run from 1.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. and gives you the opportunity to come, share, chant, sing with us. So obviously a very interactive session and we hope to see you all there. Now last but not the least again is a lovely person called Priya Kumar from USA. Born in California, Priya Kumar is a singer of Indian origin who made her first appearance in Saregama Pa, singing superstars in 2010. She was a top finalist of NTV Star Search that year and has several Hindi and Bangla albums to her credit. Priya is also a professional model and trained classical dancer in the Bharatanatyam and Kuchipudi styles. Her recent accomplishment is winning the runner-up crown of Mrs. Bharat New England and title holder of Mrs. Bharat USA Classic. She believes in passing inspiration to the younger generation by encouraging them to be the best versions of themselves. The causes she supports include animal rights and support of the girl child. Namaste Priya, welcome and thank you for your patience. So sorry to keep you waiting. Namaste to you as well. And namaste to all of the wonderful listeners, whoever is watching our program. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, I'll yes. play yeah, over to you. <laughs> Certainly. Um, so, yes, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Healing Our Earth and the Brahma Kumaris for holding this wonderful global summit. I think it's a great way to connect, considering all of us are going through isolation. So it's a nice way to bring the world together, I believe. Another thing that definitely heals at a time like this is music, because while concerts have been canceled, virtual shows, virtual stage, and music has definitely not been canceled. Hope has not been canceled. So the first song I'm going to sing is a song of hope, a song of peace. Uh, I'm not in the studio, so I'll be singing without music. Uh, I hope you will all bear with me and enjoy the music. I'd like to build the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I'd like to hold it in my arms and keep it company. That's the song I hear. Let the world sing today. A song of peace that echoes on and never goes away. I'd like to build the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I'd like to hold it in my arms and keep it company. Thank you. The second song I'd like to sing is a song that's been translated in many, many languages. I'll start with English and then I'll move across. 
This is a song of hope. This is a song that we will all overcome. I thought the song is very appropriate because although we are in the midst of a pandemic and we are facing unprecedented and extremely challenging times as a nation, as a world, in fact, this song brings a ray of hope. And I always aspire to be an angel of hope for people around me. Mother Teresa once said, never let anyone leave you without feeling happier and better about themselves. And this is a quote that has transformed my life completely. So we are all in this together. And the way we are going to get through this pandemic is helping each other, uplifting each other through the power of music and spirituality. So this is my second song dedicated to everyone across the globe. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Amra korbo joy, amra korbo joy, amra korbo joy ek din. Ho buke go bhire, amra jene chhi, amra korbo joy ek din. Hum honge kamyaab, hum honge kamyaab, hum honge kamyaab ek din. Ho man mein hai vishwas, pura hai vishwas, hum honge kamyaab ek din. We are not afraid, we are not afraid, we are not afraid today. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Amadir ne kono bhoi, amadir ne kono bhoi, amadir ne kono bhoi, aaj ke. Ho bukir go bhire, amra jene chhi, amra kurbo joy ek din. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Bukir go bhire, amra jene chhi, amra kurbo joy ek din. Oh, man me hai vishwas, pura hai vishwas, hum honge kamiya ek din. Thank you so very much for listening. Namaste to all of you. And I do hope you're all doing very well, considering the circumstances. Thank you very much for that, Priya. That was absolutely amazing. And you know what? Honestly, we did not feel that there was no music because it was absolutely flawless and beautiful. Um, Priya, Thank you. Uh, Priya, coming back to you. So what brought you into singing and how did you come about with inspiring the right younger generation to be better versions of themselves? I think that's such a fantastic thing to do. What inspired you to do that? Well, as a child, my parents have definitely been pivotal. In fact, they used to take me to India almost every summer so I could learn classical Indian music the right way. And those lessons really um, inspired me to continue singing. Even after coming back to America, I joined choir, I joined band, and I was singing constantly. In fact, I was even taking vocal lessons for the longest time. Even today, I'm learning from uh, Sri Anup Borua. He's my teacher because I feel that music has no end to learning. And the more I learn, the better I feel about myself. M music definitely is food for the soul. 
And uh, I was able to inspire others because I myself participated in a reality show. And uh, after securing a position in Saregamapa, I later went on in a Bengali talent show called NTV Star Search. I got to top 10 over there. And then my husband and I decided to launch a show called Bangla Idol New England for the younger generation because Asif and I, my husband, we wanted to give them a platform to shine because so many children have the urge in them and the search to do something, but they need a platform and they need the confidence and the grooming. So thankfully we were able to get a group of judges who groomed them, who prepared them for the rounds and for the stage. And the show was very successful thanks to the help of our mentors, our judges, who were instrumental in helping our children grow. We did this show for two seasons. In fact, last year was our grand finale and uh, we had almost six winners because it was quite a competition. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming here today and thank you for supporting Healing Our Earth. So thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure meeting all of you and I've enjoyed uh, the singing of Paul and Kristen as well. So uh, namaste to all of you once again. Namaste. Thank you. Right. So um, we're nearly at the end of our program. It means for me to say thank you very much to all the audience. Obviously, um, you know you can watch us live on healingourearth.com and on our Facebook page, which is Facebook forward slash Healing Our Earth. And we're also streaming live on Enrich TV, our associate internet TV. Now, the Healing Our Earth team are both humbled by the huge response that they've had and very happy that they're making a difference with our program so far. Today, we dealt with the topic very close to our heart, which is our planet. How can we do our part in limiting the negative effects of climate change? How, what can we do to conserve our planet Earth? So I'm going to leave with something that one of our facilitators, Christiana, said earlier today. She said, physical distancing is unavoidable, but now more than ever, it's important to keep our heart connection alive. Thank you very much and namaste. <laughs>